Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jedi, Sith, and everything in between, to another exciting edition of the new Force Order for Life podcast. It is a Star Wars podcast, if you haven't realized that by now, brought to you by us, three of the scruffiest, sexiest, smartest nerf herders in a galaxy far, far away, aka the fans. And tonight, riding along with us is a very special guest, but we're bringing this show to you, the fans. I am one third of the hosts. I am a three time, a uh, three belt holding heavyweight champion in a galaxy far, far away, a pro wrestler known as the Greek god Papadon, aka your boy GGP. And alongside with me, I have a thunder stealing kung fu grip medical droid. And a vindictive, malicious, ruthless Sith Lord. Boys, smarten them up. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Dark Lord of the podcast, the Sith Ari, the rampaging Revenkist, the Butcher, your boy Spiro, a.k.a. Darth Spiridon. And I am smarter than 2-1-B, more technical than FX-7, the God of Stealing Thunder. And the man who's counting on his high midichlorian level to keep him safe from the coronavirus. Ah. Dr. Destroyo, Alex Arroyo. And alongside us, we have a very special guest riding, uh, riding the 12 parsecs of the Kessel Run with us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You may know him as S.N. Herder. Uh, he is a, an author extraordinaire. He has written a book pertaining to the galaxy far far away it's not licensed by star wars has nothing to do with star wars it's just very similar to what we love you know him because we do a segment every week called the star wars kama sutra introduce yourself to the fans all three of them hey i'm eric i go by sn herder and i wrote the star wars kama sutra the completely unauthorized star wars kama sutra that thankfully we haven't gotten sued for yet <laughs> uh, there it is welcome to the show there eric pleasure to have you great to be here you guys have the first edition there's actually a special edition that we've released since then oh really oh, oh yeah more, more positions Interest. more positions we pulled out the the poetry that we put into the first version because i couldn't think of enough positions ah. uh added in took out a couple positions i didn't like that much Added in more positions that dealt with characters from the new trilogy. Ah. Uh, well, I guess I got to get that one. So You see, Doc's uh, wife bought him the book for Christmas. Awesome. Yeah, and we're about halfway through, which is great. <laughs> my, my favorite one-star review of this book on Amazon so far has been from the guy who complained that it wasn't educational. <laughs> what? It wasn't educational? Yeah. That's only because he, he can only do so many positions with his one his left hand. Yeah. That's exactly it, because I feel that when Doc does this very popular segment, our fans, our listeners are very educated. So that guy is full of shit, man. Straight up. Well, listen, just it's to let the, you know. It's the great thing about what? No, no, go on, go on, go on. It's the great thing about Amazon reviews, though. I mean, I, I did a cookbook a couple of years before that for the cartoon show Adventure Time. And someone's biggest complaint was that my cooking wasn't as good as Julia Child's. Huh. Well, wow. Like, okay. I, I never okay. knew she actually cooked. What? Well, See, you know what the what? internet has given people is the ability to forget about getting slapped in your fucking teeth when you were in uh, grade school. That's the problem. Yeah. Everybody's brave when they got a keyboard in their hands. That's exactly. Right. So then, until they get punched in the throat, then they, uh, that too. Yeah. Then, when that, then reality starts to sink in. Yeah. But just it to let was you at know. that moment that he realized he fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, listen, a couple of things I want you to know, Eric. Sure. Our podcast is not a typical paint by the numbers type of podcast, meaning sure. that it's just three guys, the three of us just sitting back talking about uh, Star Wars, everything oh. we love and hate about it. And it's very chill. It's very laid back. You want to swear, you can swear. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, dick and fart jokes on the show. We, you know, we all grew up in the 80s and the 90s, so our humor 
pertains to those eras. It's not very snowflake esque, or you know what I'm saying. So feel free to just be comfortable and don't worry about offending anybody because at the end of the day, if they're offended, we really don't care. You're talking to a guy who spent two hours gluing a ball gag onto Boba Fett's face. <laughs> Dude, we did that one last week. <laughs> we did that that's one last week. One. That, yeah. Page 52. That's the one we did yeah. last week. That's awesome. <laughs> Tremendous. That was one of the few ones that had characters from other movies in it, too. It yeah. had the uh, Funko fiction. reaction yeah. gimp from, from Pulp Fiction. Indeed. Listen, we have a <laughs> motto on this show, just so you know. Our whole premise is this. Um, the three of us, the New Force Order, we try not to get ourselves over on Star Wars. Now, over is a wrestling terminology. I don't know if you're a wrestling fan, but over means trying to get yourself more popular. Off of, right. off, off of Star Wars. So we're not trying to get ourselves over on Star Wars' behalf. We're trying to get Star Wars more over with the fans. So we won't sit here and hit people with clickbait material and situations where we just hate on Star Wars just to hate so we can get uh, people to listen and because they like to, to watch or listen to car crashes or whatever the case may be. This is just a, a, a very laid-back uh, Star Wars podcast. And enough of me rambling. We ask our guests the same question when they first come on. What are your first memories of Star Wars? And when did you first fall in love with it? I saw Return of the Jedi in the theaters. Sweet. So did I. So I'm 42. Me too. So, yeah. So that was, that was my first real Star Wars experience. I probably saw, you know, VHS tapes of the, of, of uh, A New Hope and Empire before that. But I think, you know, I'm always going to love Ewoks. Uh, <laughs> I know I know some people hate them, but, but Ewoks freaking rule. Um, Murder and bears. they're some of the most brutal characters in the entire Star Wars universe. You can't say they're cuddly little te- teddy bears and then look over and see the drum set made out of the, you know, decapitated heads of stormtroopers. Exactly. They're, they're, which, they're savage murder bears. Yeah. Which is the best micro machines ever made, by the way. <laughs> that, that was a good one. Right? Yeah. You walk with the drum set from the from the hawk from the uh, Endor battle pack. That's that's the absolute yeah. best. Are, are, yeah, you an avid, are you an avid toy collector? I mean, I see a statue behind you there. I see the Ezra from oh, side show. There's, there's a few behind me. There's the uh, there's the first. Uh, I used to write for a magazine called Toy Shop. Back oh, in the day. so there you go. Okay. So. I used to do. I used to review for Toy Shop Magazine until they went out of business. Um, but yeah, this is my uh, my sideshow premium format Vader, and yeah, there's the uh, the gentle giant Ezra and Chopper statue. And this is a really old piece that I thought I lost because uh, I'd given it to my stepfather. And then after he died, I found it behind the door in his office. Huh. And the uh, sideshow did a couple of these museum style uh, miniature scenes from the original movies and this is this is a, a very very tiny i don't know if you can see it yeah. in this picture i could see it from empire yeah. strikes back it's the, it's the worm, worm the space worm yeah it's a very very tiny millennium falcon the size of my fingernail just escaping out of the out of the space slug that's very nice. cool see doc yeah. is an avid to- doc is an avid toy collector awesome um, well all the all the toys in, in that book are mine so uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tremendous, man. So, hey, yeah, yeah, we're all or we're all peas in the same pod here. So this is gonna be a great episode. So, yep. all right. So, Return of the Jedi is your first experience. Was there a certain scene in Return of the Jedi, or a certain scene from the previous movies when you first saw? You said, "Whoa, this is this is for me." Can you remember that far back? I'm trying Not to say think. you're old. I'm just saying, <laughs> man. Like, if you're gonna ask me my first, my first like lasting star wars memory it's it's not even from the movie okay it's uh they i didn't have i remember i remember having some of the original action figures with the with the lightsabers that came out of the arms nice and i did not have an ewok action figure but my mom bought me an ewok pencil eraser that you can actually you can find them on ebay now for a couple of bucks and they're in the shape they're they're not like they're not flat they're they're fully 3d and I just remember, like, I was four or five years old. We were just about to move from the first house I lived in, in Massachusetts. And I was throwing it up in the air and catching it, which is a bad habit I used to have. It's how my Chris Star, the Crystal Warrior figure, shattered on, on the driveway. But um, I, I 
missed the catch and and my little wicket eraser dropped into the bushes in the front of this house and I could not find it. Oh no. And I still I still think about going back up to Massachusetts and looking for those bushes. <laughs> I mean I could I could I could go on eBay, spend three bucks, get the damn thing myself. It's not but the one man, I just I imagine that it's living in like this entire fantasy endor world inside this bush at this point <laughs> he's made a whole clan of ewoks inside the bush Absolutely. i think i've made a whole clan of ewoks inside a couple of bushes myself but <laughs> <laughs> hey tip awesome. the veal try the waitress um that's funny you say that eric because there's a there was a photo that was floating around uh facebook a couple years ago it was apparently someone had a stormtrooper when they were kids and they had thrown it into their tree in their parents house oh i saw that yeah, and it was he found it like thirty years later, and the tree had overgrown on the yeah. stormtrooper. It was like trapped in the middle of the the bark of the tree, kind of like one side out the back, one side out the front. So, I'm sure poor Wicked Eraser is also uh, sitting oh, in a similar situation right now. I'm buried I'm somewhere. Sure Wicked has fully deteriorated into dust at this point. Most likely, but, but yeah, hey, the, those weren't the run, best right? erasers. They yeah. were awful erasers, honestly. Never erase anything with a figular eraser. You will smudge everything. But they yes. make cool little figures if you if you don't get the money. Uh, I agree with you, brother. Yeah. I agree with you. I draw comics, so I, when awesome. I was a kid, I used to erase with those figure erasers, and just like you, it would turn into a big black smudge, and I used to get so angry that I'd have to get the actual little uh, um, block erasers and try to use that to erase and get yeah. rid of the smudge. I remember that. Um, so question. So. You used to review toys for toy the toy magazine. You said, obviously, you're an author. What other books have you written? And h- how did you get into writing this uh, Kama Sutra book? So uh, before I did the Kama Sutra, I did uh, another unauthorized book that I tried to make authorized, but we could never get a hold of the people at the Cartoon Network. And that was uh, the unauthorized Adventure Time cookbook. Mm-hmm which uh, is a series of recipes based off the characters that show. It was sort of an easy get for us because you want to make a cookbook about a cartoon, make one where all the characters are food. Uh, So that was pretty easy. Weirdest thing we had in there was uh, a full roasted stuffed cow heart. Yeah. Uh, So, which is delicious, but probably scared a lot of kids. I would Um, imagine. So that was the first book I ever did. I'm working on, um, on a new Batman book right now that i can't talk too much about because uh we're trying to actually go through a real publisher and and get real licensing on it um and uh let's see i've also i write for a living now uh for the last 15 years i i write dating profiles for a living oh that's awesome wait so so like people pay you for a dating profile and you write it people people pay me they give me a call i help them write their match profiles their tinder profiles i teach them how to how to online date and not be a complete mook about it. Are you married? Um, oh. I am. I met I'm married. I met my wife on a dating site. Uh, and I opened up conversation with her uh, by asking about what her favorite Star Wars collectible was and telling her that mine is my gentle giant scout trooper on a speeder bike statue. Ooh, that's a nice statue. Yeah. What was hers? She was uh, her favorite thing was a photo that she had gotten signed when she met um, Carrie Fisher. Oh, nice. She's oh, a keeper, we'll definitely. See. Oh, yeah. Well, congratulations. Her, thanks. Her her wedding band is actually Vader's lightsaber. Wow. Oh. That's yeah, awesome. It's, it's a white That's gold band do. with the hilt coming up on both sides and a band of rubies going across the front. Wow. Not nice. bad. Look at you. Very how'd cool. You, how'd you get, how'd you get that made, Killer? Uh, I saw a company making custom jewelry like like it on online. And uh, Takayas... Takayas Jewelry out of LA. They make a lot of really great custom stuff based off of uh, movies, video games, anime, stuff like that. Wow, Takayas. Okay, shout out to them. Cheap plug. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, maybe you can help Doc out. He needs some uh, some help for his uh, profile on Grinder. Yeah. So. Nah. Listen, listen I, I can write every profile on Grinder. Dick pic, uh, where you at? Here's my uh, number. That's all you got to do on Grinder. It's, it's easy. For Grinder and, may, and maybe for Growler, which is Grinder for, for hairy guys. Oh, Growler. Really Growler. Oh, Spiro. <laughs> Spiro. Spiro. That's <laughs> you, brother. Spiro that's that one. Yeah, you, you could do your, he could do his Chewbacca raw for that. Oh, man. There's a whole subset 
called of, of people called bears who are, bears. Who are men that are a little thicker, a little hairier. And, yeah, and so they go on Growler, that. not on Grinder. That's tremendous. Growler. <laughs> GGP is more of a twig, so it's a, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you get the fuck out of here, you little midget. <laughs> midget, I'm taller than you. What are you talking about? <laughs> he's taller than me. He's younger than me. I mean, he's everything. It's amazing. I know. Just because I copied your beard this week for the coronavirus don't mean I fucking love you, okay? Uh, anyway. Um, all right. So, all right. uh... So what's I'm just curious. I want to just dip into this whole dating thing. What's the uh, what's the I, don't tell me the formula, but what are some important things to hit? Because I don't want to take your business away um, for writing a, a successful dating profile. Well, first of all, it depends on the type of dating site that you're on. I mean, there's two different types of online dating. There's there's profile driven stuff like Match, eHarmony, Zeus, uh, Plenty of Fish, OK Cupid, and then there's discovery dating apps like Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, where those are 90% photos and one or two lines of text. The other ones rely on one or two paragraphs of text and are about 50% photos. Guys tend to be too mission driven when it comes to online dating. They treat, uh, they get way too salesy as opposed to just trying to talk to people and tell people who they are and talk about what they want. They're trying to convince you to love them and it just makes them sound sad and pathetic. So. So and all you people living in your mother's basement right now, there's some free advice. So you can find me at ProfileHelper.com. There we so. go, ProfileHelper.com. What ProfileHelper.com. That's the website, folks. You want to get laid? You want to find Mrs. Right or Mr. Right instead of Mrs. Right Now or Mr. Right Now? Hey, you might want both. doesn't matter. Go to ProfileHelper.com, and, and guess what? You could put down the Cheetos and go out and watch Star Wars together with a significant other instead of sitting in there crying, and, you know, watching Disney Plus in your mom's basement, being a keyboard oh, yeah. tough guy. I, I'm married to a woman who spent two weeks building her own Slave Vader costume. Slave, slave, slave Vader. Vader. Yeah. Uh, interesting. That is interesting. Awesome. Do you have pics? Uh, yeah, I'll send them to you after this. Sweet. Ah, Very nice. A nice mashup right there. So what? I must have put that as as his Tinder profile picture. So don't worry. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> what 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 inspired you to do the Kama Sutra book? I was just goofing around one day. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I took. I think. I think the first picture I took was the two adats, uh, going doggy style. Tremendous. And because it was, and it was, it was an easy, low hanging joke. Just took a quick picture on the kitchen counter, sent it to my, sent it, she was my girlfriend at the time, sent her that picture, got back in LOL. And I was like, okay, I work from home. I have too much free time. Let's yeah. do another one of these. Next thing I knew, I had like 25. <laughs> and Tremendous. she's like, why don't you just make a book? And so then it just, then it, it turned into a real project. And then it became about actually making the full book. And uh, and it was a blast to make. Oh, I can imagine. Oh, I mean, I would have had a, I would have had a ball doing that. That's hilarious. Literally a ball, a ball gag usually, doing that. Usually he has two of them bouncing on his chin, but that's on a Wednesday night. So what was so so what was that pitch like? You know, to, you know, to the publisher. Oh God, there's no publisher. Was, so it's all self-published, right? They would have laughed me out of my ass. No, no, no. This was this is a book that was. Totally unauthorized. Star Wars was already owned by Disney. There's no way any publisher was going to go any anywhere near it. In fact, I was, I was, I was making chocolate bars and selling them to Think Geek. Um, when I was, I, I am the first guy who made the dark chocolate sriracha bar, and Think Geek oh. sold several thousand of those for me. And it was really because a friend of mine who works for Read Pop, which does celebration stuff. I had come to see him when Celebration was in Orlando, and I brought him this candy bar that I just made in my kitchen. He's like, go have this guy try it. And we sold several thousand through them. Oh, and that's awesome, man. Thanks. You know, and they wanted to actually carry this book. They're like, we love this book. We will lose our Star Wars license if we carry it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was like, you know what? At this point, I, I'm not going to go to a publisher. Uh, there's no point in asking permission from Disney. Because this definitely doesn't fit the family-friendly vibe they're looking for. And I was 95% sure that it fell under fair use. You know, as far as parody. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, so from there, I said, screw it. 
And I just, the, the only thing, the only real consideration I made is that at the time, <laughs> my wife worked at Disney World because we're, we're down in Orlando. Okay. And I didn't want her getting canned, you know, because her boyfriend that she lived with was publishing photos of, you know, an underage Ahsoka trying to tempt Admiral Akbar into, into statutory. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap. Yeah, <laughs> we haven't got that out yet, but uh, so. well, listen, um, real quick, I love the haikus you put in the back of the book. I'm glad I, I, I had zero faith in those, <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad. Someone well, liked we, them. we we were probably like I think maybe five or six pages in because we do about a you know a position an episode until I flipped to the back and I was like, oh shit, there's poetry in the back of this, and I'm like. It's haiku time, so we usually like now whip out one haiku as well when as we're going through. Show, show, show me your Bosch is one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious, dude. The the origin of all those haikus was very simply that the book had to be so many pages long for us to get writing on the spine of the book. Ah, uh... and I had I had at that time run out of ideas for for new positions. The the new uh, fan, uh, Force Awakens hadn't come out yet, so like the one of the last pictures in that book, I think, is um, is the one with the Kylo Ren in it. That was that was before the movie even came out, so I didn't even have a reference for really who or what Kylo Ren and how he fit into the story yet. Yep, you're right. The First Order. Yeah, with Jar Jar Binks. And and the cheap uh, McDonald's Barbie place that I found on eBay for five bucks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that actually uh, makes me think of a question. What, what was the? Because I'm an action figure collector. I have nearly all of the Hasbro stuff. Um, I think I'm missing like one or two, or three and three quarter figures. Yeah, you could probably guess which ones. Um, and I have all the all the vintage three and three quarters. Um, all new. I bought them all like two years, like a year and a half ago, and I just went back, eBayed them all, and got got them all in the best shape I can. And I'm trying slowly cool. trying to upgrade the ones I need to upgrade. So, and they're all like cased up and displayed with lights, the whole nine yards, because I'm a psychopath. Um, what was the? If I'm assuming you had to scour eBay to pick up certain things that you needed, if you had an idea and you didn't have a figure, what was the hardest one that you had to track down to get, and the most expensive one? Oh, no, I didn't have any money. Uh, I don't think I don't think I paid more than ten bucks for any figure. At eighty percent of them I owned already. Yeah. You know, I I had worked in a toy store in high school. I had I had always sort of bought things when I could here and there. Um, you know, so realistically, I don't think there was anything really expensive. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe the job of the hut with his tongue out was one of the harder ones to get a hold of mm -hmm. um but honestly star wars figures aren't that expensive yeah it all depends on which ones you're looking for but you were definitely right yeah, you can get them for the like a dime a dozen at some point yep i mean there was no like uh blue snaggle tooth or anything like that you know uh no nothing came out of a out of a pvc acrylic box or anything like that so there wasn't any Boba Fett with a J uh, a J rocket shooting out of his back. No, I think the Boba Fett that we've got in there is is a definitely a newer release. Yeah, I think, just, I think uh, it actually might be the three seven three point seven five Black series. It's gotcha. the I think I think it's the uh, is that the VOTC one? The vintage it originally, originally be, trilogy, yeah collection. It, it 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 could be, but it's definitely. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's definitely new. not good. I've got a lot of old Power of the Force stuff in that. Book, yep um which is worth nothing now yeah um i've got i still got a bunch of carded figures from that oh yeah don't tell me that because my parents basement are full with those so right now yeah but um unfortunately like <laughs> like everybody else out there that was i mean i i've spent more money since then trying to trying to get old micro machines <laughs> 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 well, I, I, very similar to you, I'm a big sta uh, statue junkie. I have like, mm -hmm. I have eight cases from IKEA, the curio cases in my right in front of me, right here, awesome. in, in my in the in my man cave, 
full of statues. And I got boxes. I got to buy a few more cases to put these other statues that are sitting in boxes. But they're all all Star Wars and Marvel and DC related. So, yeah, I can feel your pain, brother. It's not it's not, it's not cheap being a geek. You know what I mean? No, it's you know I I don't buy nearly as much as I used to. Um, man, I loved I loved being a toy uh, a toy reviewer because free stuff sent me everything. That's like, awesome. Yeah, I I had to give away. There was when I when I was writing for Toy Shop magazine, there was a, a pile of diamond select statues and busts oh. next to my front door. And I would make people take one when they left my house. There was that much stuff. That's wow. awesome. So there's a there's a great comic book shop in Orlando called Gods and Monsters. Um, that actually it's really cool. They've got a uh, a, a post-apocalyptic speakeasy hidden in the back wow um yeah it's, it's a really cool place when they were first starting up they came over and they filled a u-haul truck out of my storage room because i needed some cash because i was getting ready to move and they needed they needed inventory yeah, yeah nice so How, how'd you get that job with the uh the uh the toy shop magazine <laughs> um i was at there used to be a toy show in orlando called the fx show uh, there's, there's two, there was two main shows in, in Orlando, FX and Megacon. Megacon's still around. It's bought by Fan Expo now. still runs. I'm waiting to see if they cancel it next month because of coronavirus. Yeah. Um, but when FX show was around, Krause Publications, who was the magazine that ran, um, I think they ran uh, Beckett's even. But they ran oh, wow. a bunch of stuff. But they also ran Toy Shop Magazine. And I walked up to them and I'm like, hey, how do I write for you? And they said, well, send me a sample. And that was it. Easy I had enough. the next the next issue. I had articles, and I was I did a bunch of great articles for them. I got to interview, uh, you know, Richard Taylor from Weta for one article. I interviewed Todd McFarlane, nice. uh, who was who was full Todd when I interviewed him. He <laughs> was talking about how he could give a hundred grand to his mom, and she could come up with a better toy company than most of his competitors. Um, <laughs> I so, agree with that. Yeah. So. Um, well, it took him long enough to finally put out an articulated spawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally yesterday. Yeah, but uh, it only took him twenty years. All right. Um, yeah. You know, although his, you can't, you can't deny how great his sculpts are. No. Um, right. but I mean, Star Wars. I have to be real careful about Star Wars because it's dangerous now. There's too much stuff. The Metacom stuff is all great. Yep. Um. The living in Orlando, you can sometimes get the park stuff on the cheap. And they've got this Elite Series line, which, man, all of the figures with faces are hot garbage. Yeah. But those are the metal droid, the metal ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're, they're just off scale. They're like seven or eight inches tall. Yeah. So they're, they're more in scale with the McFarlane figures. But the, the droids... The troopers, uh, Boba Fett, Vader, anything where you can't see human detail yeah. is an absolute. I mean, if you're going to have Vader, you may as well have Vader solid metal. Yep. Yeah. I was, uh, when they first came out, I was all in on them. And then it got to the point where, like you said, the humans were just fucking terrible. They looked awful. And I, I completely hard stopped them all. And even now, like I was in Disney store a couple of days ago and I saw the gonk droid, which is like, it was a cool figure. I liked it. I would have bought it like, you know, two years ago, but I was like, pass. I just do not have enough room for that shit. And those things can kill somebody. They're like, oh, they're yeah. like the old school transformers where, you know, when, oh, when Optimus Op nice. Prime was like 98% die cast metal and you would swing it across the room and whack your brother in the head with it. And he'd be unconscious for like three days. That was, those were when, <laughs> when they were toys. Then Our two ways at least a pound. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, if that if that gonk droid shows up on clearance for ten bucks, I'm not going to say no to it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Exactly. I'm, I'm, the XDs guys. I'm the king of clearance over here. Don't yeah. worry. I'm laying well, it out. I, I have spent more money at Ross than I'd like to admit. Ross is a good spot. See, I <laughs> pop. We, we talked about that pop a couple of shows. Yes, ago. we did. We did. R Ross dressed for less. He's like, I've never heard of that before. He's a guy who travels for you know as as, as part of his uh, his business. And I'm like, it's an area like, you know, Mall of America. They sell mostly clothes, but if you go to the back, they have some ridiculous oh, yeah. deals on toys. 
Ross, five below, sometimes has some good stuff. Yeah, I, I was at five below yesterday buying crap. Yeah, I was it's, in there this morning. That's it's awesome. legit. It's I mean, there, there's some good spots. When, when, when you're in the know, there's some good spots. Oh, yeah. So, the problem so, is too many people are in the know now. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it. That's, that's the issue. So, Eric, so. what is your favorite Star Wars movie? Crap. That's an unfair question. Okay. I, um, I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I, lo- I think of the original trilogy as a single unit. Okay. You know, it's, 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 a, piece, it's a cohesive story. Mm-hmm. I also, for me, I respect that some people like them. I respect they grew up with them. For me, um, I'd rather stab myself in the face than watch the, the prequels. All um, the prequels? All the prequels? You don't, you're not a prequel guy? I, I like Clone Wars. As the a TV series. show? The series? Yeah. yeah, everyone does. It's fantastic. Uh, you know, but I, the acting is awful. And it's, the, the stories are poorly written. Uh, they're, I can watch, I can sit down and watch them if I have to. I can't do it without making jokes the whole time, though. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, they, they, are, they are the Mystery Science Fiction Theater 3000 films of, of the Star Wars universe to me. Okay. Um, Solo doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. Why? Oh. Uh, we're going to get some heat now. Why? Oh, yeah. You stepped in a landmine, my man. No, Solo was Solo was a fine movie in its own right, but in no way did it feel like a movie that belonged as part of the Star Wars universe, except really? for the fact that people were named some of the characters <laughs> in the films. Oh, I disagree with you on that one, but you're entitled to your opinion. Well, that's that's the that's the great thing is we can we can disagree and still be friends. Oh, absolutely. You know? The show, the yeah. whole premise of the show is that's, about that. You know, I mean, uh, solo. Lost. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. And on <laughs> that note, I was waiting for the run I was waiting for the run Here we go. What a what a what is your opinion on on the Last Jedi? <sighs> <laughs> you think this is gonna be this hard, huh? <laughs> so that's what that's what Papa Don told his wife too at some point last week. Um, my wife, my wife, that movie a lot. My life, my wife doesn't not like any Star Wars thing, except for maybe Resistance, which ah. she tried and she couldn't get into. Ah. Um, and she's never seen the old Ewoks cartoon. I don't think she, that she'd go for that either. The problem, Last Jedi had some cool stuff, but committed some serious, serious sins that I still have trouble, uh, I still have trouble forgiving. Uh, Holdo didn't need to be there. She, 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 as far as I'm concerned, Holdo robbed Akbar of a hero's death. Yeah, we agree. Take that scene, put Akbar in there, and fans will, would still be talking about how amazing it was to this day. All right, I'll make you a deal because you're sending the pictures of your uh, <laughs> mash costume. I will send you a link. There's a guy, there's a gentleman who's an editor. Uh, his name is Ivan Ortega. He used to go on um, YouTube and complain about uh, episode eight. Oh, I've I seen lo- him fix scenes and stuff. Yeah, Just, yeah. He he did his own edit of Last Jedi, top to bottom, uh, top to bottom. Right. So I mean, I personally love Last Jedi. There's certain beats in the movie that I don't agree with and I wish weren't present, but overall I loved it. Um, I think this, there's good stuff in it. Oh, no, I agree with yeah. you. I agree with you. What I'm saying is this guy, Ivan Ortega, his, in my opinion, his edit is better. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm pro Last Jedi, and I'm saying his edit is better. So we'll send you the link so you can watch it. You'll probably enjoy it more. Oh, yeah. I'm, look. The main changes I would make is I would just I would remove Holdo. Yeah, I get you. And it's not because she's a woman; it's because she could have just told Poe the plan uh, uh, instead of freezing him out, which yep, would have yep. solved a lot of problem. The Canto bite storyline to me just didn't need to be there. Um, I was fully accepting of Luke. And the way he acted in the beginning, it, it kind of made sense because Luke, as much as I've always loved Luke, Luke has always also been a major whiny bitch. Um, <laughs> but I want to go to Tashi Station and pick up the so he, He's He's always been a whiny bitch who, who eventually finds his way. 
Yep. And that that's what happened here. And, and I'm OK with that. Um, you know, would I have liked to see what all the other fans complained about that we didn't get the big overpowered Luke shooting force lightning out of his butt, whatever? Probably. Uh, but I understand the decision they made and I'm cool with it. Um, I never thought I never I never really thought that Ray was a, was a Mary Sue. You know, she was a, a girl who grew up in a, in a desert having to defend herself. She was going to have fighting skills. She had a bow staff that she was fighting with her entire life. Now she's just using a one-handed weapon instead of a two-handed weapon. Um, you know, and as far as the Force goes, Luke didn't really have that much training when he started using the Force either. Nope. Yeah, no, um, I agree with you completely. You know, so, so I think there was a lot of stuff there. And, and you know, I would have liked to see Leia have more to do in that movie, but only because Carrie Fisher died before she got a chance to do more in the next movie. And that's, I can't blame Ryan Johnson for that. Um, but, yeah. You know, for that alone, it, right? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it wasn't a bad movie. It wasn't, it wasn't the movie that people are claiming is ruining Star Wars. It was a movie that made some, some very deliberate choices. Um, in an attempt to subvert expectations, and he and he did just not in the way that he was hoping. <coughs> yeah. No, Fair did enough. you like the last one? Did you like Rise of Skywalker? I yes, but yeah. um, I thought it was a good movie. But I think it 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 got so caught up in the fan service of trying to apologize for the movie before it that it missed a lot of opportunities. Okay, um, I, I but, can see your. I could definitely see your point of view. Do you believe in this uh, JJ cut that it exists? That there's a three hour version that Disney shaved down? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it exists. I I know the novelizations bring out a bunch of new stuff. Oh I yeah. I don't know if you guys talked. About, I don't want to spoil that for anyone. No, no, no. You can. We we we, we so, mentioned a couple of things about it. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of clone talk. Oh yeah. Um, you know, Palpatine's a clone. Ray's dad is a failed Palpatine clone. I guess they yep. forgot to clone the evil into him or something like that. Um, you know, I would have liked... To, I, I feel like, you know, and this is just marketing. I'm not sure how they could have done Dark Ray well as an active part of the story as opposed to just a, a, a Force vision. I knew watching the trailer, I'm like, there's no way that's part of the story. That's part of the Force. That's the Force vision. But, yeah. but I would love to see them explore it if they could find a way to do it. You know, I think that weapon was way cooler. Um, it was like lightsaber nunchucks. Yeah. Um, I would have been, been down for that, and I would have been down for seeing the EF, like the Hasbro FX version of that, which I'm sure will eventually come out. Um, although those, make, those, those lightsabers just make me miss the old Master Replica stuff. Yeah, those are good so, stuff. That that lightsaber there, I feel, would have been <laughs> such a huge money maker that they have to make it one day. They're gonna. They I wouldn't be to. surprised if it shows up first uh, at Galaxy's Edge in Disney World and Disneyland. Yeah. Okay, because right. Yeah. They've already got the hero sabers for all the main characters uh, from from Rise of Skywalker on sale in their big yeah. lightsaber shop. So. And the the uh, the Ben Solo hero one too, which is came out of yeah. nowhere. Have you guys had a chance to go to either of the? I'm the only ones? one who who who's who's been able to go. I went to the Anaheim one about a month and a half ago. What do you think? I loved it. I thought it was great. You know, I I didn't have a ton of time to walk around there and get things done and do everything that I wanted to do, but I built my own lightsaber. Nice. Um, I had an appointment for that, which was you know like a I said it before like a religious experience, and I wish. We had something like that when I was growing up because it would have, like, you know, forged me as a young child. Um, I thought the the scenery, the backdrop was great. I think they could have added a little more characterization into Galaxy's Edge and have some more Star Wars y characters as opposed to, you know, these village peddlers and everything over there. It did a good job of, like, you know, acting the part of, you know, how many credits uh, my sprite, um, you know, bomb costs. But, uh, it was a thermal detonator. It was, um, I really liked it. I, I unfortunately didn't get into the whole 
backstory where you can kind of like follow the app and grab, yeah. you know, the ever and give it to somebody else, give you another relic or whatever. I, I didn't do that stuff, but um, I was unable to go on any of the rides that were there. But uh, I got to go I've back. I got to do the, the, the full Monty. Say it again. I've done smugglers. Yeah. And it's fun. <laughs> but I can tell you, I was a gunner on, on, the, on the one Falcon ride. And the other gunner was a quadriplegic. So oh, well, I was apparently so you were doing all the work. Yes, yeah, so I was the only one hitting buttons for the guns on our ride. <laughs> so, Jesus Christ. We, we lost half our points, um, but it was still fun. So, <laughs> no. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, no. It was, <laughs> he had a blast. He just, he just wasn't uh, very helpful. Uh, so, <laughs> so. It's like he had one too many, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. It could no, have been my, worse. You could have been flying the ship. You guys could have crashed. Uh, oh, my, <laughs> my wife was one of the pilots. So the, the, if you've never seen the ride before, it's, it's a Millennium Falcon simulator. There's two pilots, two, two gunners, and two engineers. The pilots, one of them controls up and down. The other one controls left and right. So it's kind of like having a drunk pilot. Uh. Um, the gunners, just each gunner has a button to push. And I have no idea what the engineers do because they were behind me. Um, but it was an amazing ride. Usually the movie rides make me sick, but that one was a blast. The blue milk they serve there is disgusting. <laughs> um, it is just, and now they're making bread pudding out of it, which just sounds worse. Oh fuck! Um, yeah, you can you can get a blue milk bread pudding for breakfast in Star Wars Land. I want to yeah. do Rise of the Resistance, but I refuse to get up at seven a.m. to go stand in line for it. Well, no, dude, I, that I sounds. See with that. Was uh when I got there, I got there like at nine thirty in the morning, and they had signs up ready at the parking lot saying that all the the boarding passes are gone for already. And apparently, you had to book it online or something like that with the app, and I had no idea, so I got fucked over going to that one, which really sucked. But whatever. In Orlando, you can't even do the app. You got to show up at seven a.m. They hand out the the boarding groups, and then you got to wait for it to ping on your app later in the day. Crazy, crazy. I'm like. I'm not hoping the coronavirus gets bigger, but if yeah. it does and they don't close the park, maybe I'll get to go on the ride. Nice. So. That's uh, that's clever editing right there. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be worth getting. Uh, it'll be worth getting sick for it. So. All right. So you don't like the... I don't have the underlying health conditions. I'll survive it. Of course. So. Hey, listen, the coronavirus is just—it's overhyped. Dude. It's fear mongering from uh, from the, uh, the 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 media outlets. In my opinion, it's more people die from the flu. And it is what it is, considering that we don't live in a third world country, a uh, third world country in a mud hut surrounded by bacteria. I think we'll be OK. That's just my opinion. But whatever. Oh, yeah. I'm not the, I'm not the doctor here. I'm the conspiracy it, guy. You are the conspiracy it's, theorist. So it's, fine. it's it's bad. It's bad if you got the underlying stuff that makes it bad. Otherwise, you're probably going to make it through. Um, but, you know, don't do stupid stuff. So, no, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you totally. Yeah. So, so, all right. So you hate the prequels, you like the o the original trilogy. You're 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 in the middle with the sequel trilogy. Is that is that a fair assessment? I think overall I liked it, but I, I but I don't like it nearly as much as the original trilogy. Okay. What about Rogue One? I liked Rogue One a lot more than I was expecting to. Okay. Um, it definitely had. If if they had kissed at the end of that movie, we'd be having a different conversation. As in what? Um, you would have liked it or hated the fact that I would have hated that would have been that would have been like, oh, there's the note from the Disney producer. Ah, gotcha. You know? Um I, I went into that movie expecting everyone would die, and I was happy that they did. Um <laughs> it was a it was a good capsule story. It was it was like it was it was like a good comic book one shot. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I enjoyed it. I think giving Cassian Andor his own Disney Plus series is a is a bad idea. Uh, <coughs> I don't think people care enough to watch it. Well, what do you think about the Mandalorian? Loved it so far. Okay. Uh, loved it so far. The only complaint I have about the Mandalorian is the Black Series uh, Baby Yoda I've gotten order seems horribly out of scale. Oh. Yeah, and also horribly late to the party. Well. It makes sense, and you, apparently you can blame Donald Glover. Uh, that that was the whole thing. Is is the reason why Baby Yoda didn't leak and n no toys were ready at the time of production at the time of release of the show, 
is because while uh, John Favreau was making the, the Lion King remake and Donald Glover was Simba, he told Donald Glover about it and Donald Glover was talking to him about uh, how rap albums don't rely on studio release anymore. They just drop them without notice and that creates a much bigger splash because people love a surprise. Mm. And so they held back all press and all marketing on Baby Yoda because they knew that it was going to blow everyone away. Because there's only been like six characters of that of of that species, even going back into like Kotor area. Yeah. Um, oh, Kotor is not canon. Sorry, we don't count well, it on this show. <laughs> I'm saying even if you include that, there's three. Then fine. Then you've just got Yoda, Yaddle, and and this guy who doesn't have a name yet. Now uh, the running joke on the on the show, Spiro is a huge Kotor fan. He's like the historian of, of Kotor, and he's a huge fanboy for Revan. So we keep busting his chops, saying that Revan isn't canon and Kotor doesn't count. So you'll hear Revan us say, is, "Revan will be canon by the end of the year." Listen, he keeps praying to the Disney Mouse gods; he might get his wish. But until then, we can bust his balls all we want. They had a Revan sword at, to- at Toy Fair. Yeah, yeah, I know. know. I know. We, we know. know. Yeah, not only that, but but for the past two years, they've been using him. This motherfucker's spitting right now. Look at him. <laughs> yeah. I'm holding the mic. And, like he's an and, MC. And stop it. Yeah, MC, listen, not canon. I'm saying, I'm, saying, I'm saying that he's canon because he's been used in a lot of their, their media, games. Um, you know, he's been name dropped in, in books and stuff. Yeah. Um, the the lightsaber also, you know. I mean, well, why... there's a rumor. There's a big right. rumor that he's going to be the big bad behind the Nile in the in the <gasps> High Republic. Republic. Oh, you yeah. just made Spiro. You just gave Spiro a chop. Goosh, 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 goosh. <laughs> oh, okay. He just came in his pants. So, <laughs> I mean, that's that's the rumor that I've been hearing. Well, since you're an author, let's let's talk about the High Republic. What's your feeling on it? Um. Ooh, right. Grab some Kleenex, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what they do with it. You know, I think the, they came out with this big announcement and then they sort of dialed it back and they're like, oh, wait, this is just going to be books and comic books. So it's not going to be something that most casual fans can, can hook into. The casual, more casual fans are going to want TV shows, movies, video games. Yep. Um, I think, look, I am I am all for good stories that don't have Skywalkers. And I don't think you need a Skywalker to have a good story. Mandalorian proved that. Of course. Um, you know, and, and I'm stoked for Mandalorian Season 2 because I, I want to see... And this is one of the things I like about High Republic is I, I, I think they're going to get into that Mandalorian War era. Oh, I hope so. Because uh, that seems to be around when it's placed in in canon, um, you know. Just like, uh, and I th- I think that's also going to feed back into Mandalorian because I think uh, now I'm forgetting the name of the character, but the female Mandalorian who works the forge in the series. Yeah. I think I'm I'm forgetting her name, but I believe she's a character who was in both Clone Wars and Rebels. Bo Katan. Yes. You think That's, it's Bo-Katan underneath the hood? I, I think underneath there's a the mask? shot. Yeah, there's rumors going around. Actually, that's funny you bring it up. Two things. Number one, not a rumor. Uh, season two wrapped yesterday. So did it's it impo- wrap or did Gina Serrano's stuff just wrap? No, it wrapped. Okay. The whole, the whole thing wrapped. Uh, I think the day before, Gina wrapped her and she put her picture up on social media. And yeah. then uh, now it's in post-production. So it's supposed to be dropping allegedly in November or October. Uh, right. Of uh, 2020, which is great. Um, only thing I hope is that the episodes are a little longer. Um, <clears throat> not much. If it's another five, ten minutes each episode, I'd be satisfied. But um, someone threw up there. I don't know, again, it's rumor, speculation, if you want, that the the person, the forger, may be actually a Zabrak, like a Darth Maul species, because of the horns in the in the uh, the helmet covering the horns. Helmet. You know, uh, of the species, and it's a foundling. You know, now that they, you know, foundlings have to keep the things, uh, the masks on all the time because they changed their creed. 
I mean, it it kind of makes sense, but I severely doubt it. I'm pretty sure it's Bo Katan with you. That was my thought as well. Yeah. You know, and she was the last one to have the black saber at the end of Rebels. So it'd be pretty cool if she gets it back again to help lead them in the right direction. I mean, I mean who I don't knows? Think it's Sabine. That would be weird if they made it Sabine. No, I don't think well, so either. Well, um, another theory is that she could have been one of the people who was faithful to Maul while he actually ruled on Mandalore, you know? That would explain I don't, the spikes. Yeah, yeah, that would explain that because I, I, I don't think she's actually the first one who's had uh, spikes. On no, her, you're right. Right? Some of the Death Watch people ended up putting spikes on their right. uh, on their head and they ended up putting like red on their armor to, to, uh, to pay homage to, uh, to Maul. I'd be okay I, with they, oh, they yeah. seem to have a handle on the story, so I'm I'm trusting them for the ride. Well, and Filoni and Favreau, I trust. So I think yeah. they're going to be running Lucasfilm when Kathy's gone. So I'm I'm hoping that the rumors, the rebel, the rebels sequel rumors are true. Me too. Oh my God! Me yes. Too. Hell yeah. Because uh, I, I, I mean, that's a story that I, I'd love to see Sabine and Ahsoka in the in the outer reaches looking for Ezra. That's that to me sounds like a great story. I agree with you 100%. And and to see exactly... I mean, because this would take place after Re- Re- Revenge, uh, Revenge, Return of the Jedi. Am I, yeah. am I right? So then if that's the case, then obviously uh, Thrawn and Ezra have been either fighting side by side or been, uh, you know, suspended in animation. So maybe um, he, it's an adult Ezra looking more like Keanu Reeves with the beard and the long hair. Or it could be that he got suspended in animation and it's a young Ezra. So, you know what I'm saying? We don't it know. Could be it could be anything. Yeah. I mean, I remember, I remember when they first introduced, uh, what's it? Benicio del Toro's character. DJ. In Last Jedi. I, I was hoping, I was hoping for a minute that was going to be Ezra. You know what? I had the same feeling in episode seven when, when they introduced, uh, Kylo Ren. And there was a theory going around that Kylo Ren's really Ezra, and that Max Van's uh, uh, what's his name, um, Lord Santeca, was yeah. really Kanan. And then, and then when they started talking, if you look at it through that point of view, it almost fits the bill, until obviously it wasn't, and you find out it's Han Solo's son. But I thought that would have been pretty cool. That could have been cool, except Kanan's dead. Well, yeah, yeah. But this, and this he was blind. blind. Yeah, I know, but this is when he was still not blind. He was black. No, no, that was just the color of the costume. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Mediterranean. So, so what I'm saying is that theory came out before he went blind and before he died in the last season. So okay. at the time, it made sense. In 27, no, that makes in in retrospect that makes sense. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that I'm. I mean, I'm fine with who Kylo Ren was. It makes yeah, sense. Yeah, me too. Ben Solo, that's fine. I think. Uh, I, I would have liked it to have been a Jaina Solo out there somewhere. Um, you know, in the same way that I would have liked to have seen Mary Jade as part of Luke Skywalker's story. But, you know, that's fine. You don't need to get everything from, from old canon. No, I you agree with you. The new canon. I mean, we, we, had, we, had, we had our own theories here. Uh, our own quote-unquote booking. My whole premise was that when Skywalker lost his students... And, the, and his temple got burned to the ground that he lost his wife and daughter. And that's why he exiled himself. It ends up being that his wife was married Jade and there was a cameo of her in the movie. Maybe they do a backstory of a book or whatever. And his daughter was supposed to be Ray. And the reason why he couldn't find her is because he thought he was dead and he shut himself off from the force. You know what I'm that saying? And I mean, I think it would have made a lot more sense than her being a Palpatine, but hey, what are you going to do? Yeah, I've seen some of the complaints. There's one, I saw this meme last week where they tried to basically crap down, crap on the whole final trilogy by saying that in the end, what Abrams did was give this, give the Palpatines the win by destroying the Skywalker family line and then taking their name. But I, I don't, I don't think, I think maybe in, in the letter of the law, that's what happened. But in the spirit of the story, I think it was more about someone from the Palpatine line redeeming themselves and going over to the light side. Um, which I was okay. Right. Yeah. That makes more sense. I mean, 
everybody's trying to get their shit in. This is the problem when it comes to stuff like that. But um, we had we had a lot of crazy booking when it came to everything for the uh, <laughs> for the last movie. Uh, some of it, some of it would you know leak wise was true. Some of it wasn't. Um, but that's that's I think that's part of the fun when it comes to speculating about which thing is going to happen. Um. And if, but the problem, the big, the big problem is, I think that you know, and we spoke about this many, many times before, is that it gets toxic when, when you build it up in your head so much and think it's, it's, it's gospel, and then it doesn't happen, and then yeah. you attack, attack Star Wars and become an asshole. There, I saw a lot of that over the course of the new trilogy. There were so many people who spent months and even years making fan theories and then they got pissed that they were wrong and it was everyone else's fault it's like this is your story to enjoy it's not your story though that's the culture and the society we live in today i mean i think that i think that's one of the main reasons that episode eight got the backlash that it it got because everyone got butthurt because their theories didn't come true imagine imagine if the original trilogy um empire strikes back came out and we had, had social media that we have we had today. I think the movie would have got crucified as well because it was totally different from the first film. Social you know? media makes everything worse. Oh, I agree with you, hundred <laughs> percent. Doesn't uh, change oh, the but... fact that the movie sucked dick, man. It sucks. Oh, stop it. Dick. Listen, man. Um, if it wasn't Star Wars, I would have been like, wow, you know what, man? This is actually a cool film. But a lot of the creative decisions made, fucking listen. If you're a diehard fan, if you're, you know, if you've been married to this since day one, bro, how can, you know, how can you not look at it and be like, oh, man, that was great. I mean, uh, you know, uh, what, like the shit they did with, with Luke and with Holdo and, and all that other bullshit, the missed opportunities on Canto Bite. It's come on, man. It was just. I don't think fucking there was bad. missed opportunities on Canto Bite. I think the missed opportunity was to not include Canto Bite. That would have been better. <laughs> yeah, I mean that entire had had Haldo not. Like, I feel like Haldo was a producer's note that we need more females in the story. Um, I thought Rose cool. could have been given a lot more to do. Um, she's a good actress. But she was basically someone who was upset that her sister had died and was tasering people that she felt were deserting from a volunteer army. Um, yeah, so that that's not a great intro for her. But if if Holdo had not tried to actively keep Poe out of the loop, then there would have been no need for the Kanto bite. Uh, mission to happen at all. They could have done what they were going to do anyway when Canto might fail. Oh, you're right. Um, I think it's the execution of certain things, even with yeah. the Mary Poppins Leia. I get the premise. Oh, was... I love the premise. I just think the execution of the way it was it was done was very hokey. It was bad visual effects. I was that... I was totally on board with her having powers. Mm-hmm. I, I knew she was going to have powers because I've known Star Wars long enough. Leia's, Leia's a Skywalker. She's going to have powers. It's, it's common sense. Uh, and, and I'm glad they went back and had uh, her daughter step in and film that flashback scene of training with Luke in, uh, in Rise of Skywalker to, to just sort of clear it up for some people. But it was... It, was, it looked like... The, the actual scene looked like it was just like a bad rope rig. And then they green screened it in. It just didn't, it just didn't look, it looked like Mary Poppins or Peter Pan flying on a stage show. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, her whole silhouette, the fucking coat she wore, everything, the way her, her, her body flowed. I mean, it, you, you know, you can black her out. Put her on Mary Poppins. Nobody would notice it. Yep. Yeah. You know. So. Totally. Listen. Totally. But I'm glad the issues were it. there. You know, the issues were there, and and I really don't think at any point is gonna is the uh, the last Jedi debate gonna be over. Oh no. But speaking of more, but speaking of moreover. Nope. Mm-hmm. Speaking of 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 love time. Well, we do a love time first. Yeah, we'll do love time first. All right. 
Love time is always over. It's Love sexy time. time. Why will we walk? <laughs> All right. So um, this is the point where our producer puts in the uh, Kama Sutra jingle that we have right now. Dear God, you got a jingle. Oh, it's cool. We have a jingle. You have to listen to it. It's a pretty good jingle. All right. So every <coughs> week, I'm excited. This week, I'm kind of nervous because we have the author of this fine Fine, fine, uh, you know, biblioteca here. I don't know um, if I qualify as an author for this book. You definitely, you like, definitely are the author. I don't know if there's enough um, words for it to be for me to be the author. Yeah, it's good enough. I'm. So How about we mastermind? usually have the what? What? mastermind. How about mastermind? Is that better? I'll take that. There you Master go. Beta, Master beta, that baby, word, that would have been yeah. worse. Yeah. So, so Eric, so. we're gonna let you pick a page out of your own book. And we're going to do that page for this week's entry in the Kama Sutra. Well, I don't know what you've done and what you haven't yet. Well, we haven't done a ton. If you if you name a page that we've done, we'll make you pick another one. Have you done Let the Wookiee Win? We yes. did Let the Wookiee Win. Okay. Um, and by the way, it's, it's completely random when, when when we pick these numbers. We have the guests usually pick the number. Jeez. You're asking me to remember stuff now, too. Let's just pick um, a number. That's it. We've done I Know, which is a good one. We've done my personal favorite, which was a uh, slave layer. That was a, uh, that was that's your personal. I don't think that made the special edition. Oh, that's sad because that was fantastic. Um, do you have the other job of the hut one? Uh, there's the Henson's creature shop one, or the yes. or is it, there's a different one. We yeah, haven't done that one yet. No, that was a challenging one to do because. It was hard to get those guys to balance. All right. Page 56 of the Kama Sutra. It's called Henshin, Henson's Creature Shop. Stars Job of the Hut with his tongue out. Darth Maul and Princess Leia Organa, a.k.a. Slave Leia, but a.k.a. really in, Star, in the new Star Wars canon, Jabba's prisoner, Princess Leia. She'll always a, be Slave Leia. A, a, 100% absolutely. So, fellas, what do you think this one entails if it's called Henson's Creature Shop? Mm. Kermit banging uh, Leia there. There's no Kermit. It's like there's only Jabba, Darth Maul, and, and, and Leia. That's it. Damn. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's threesome on uh, on uh, Jabba. Well, if you take a peek over oh, there, right. you have our boy Jabba the Hutt there, <laughs> who's who's got you know his his right hand <clears throat> up the Zabrock rectum of Darth Maul. And you got his left hand up the very force sensitive, not clitoratorial sensitive, vagina of Princess Leia Organa. He could just be grabbing Darth Maul's balls. You don't it's know. Possible, but if he's working him like a puppet, as in Henson, Henson's creature shop, then he's probably got his hand up his ass. Let's be honest. Uh, you should write a, a profile for that one on a dating site. Um, this is a good one. Um, one of the few with Jabba inside there. And he's also got the lick going on from the side over there. This is actually a, a fairly difficult figure to obtain. Not so difficult, but it's uh, it, it, it doesn't pop up on eBay very often. Um, it's a cool one. The tongue comes out, too, if you want to know pop. And you can you know put it in your pocket and take it with you. Um, but that's uh, Henson's Creature Shop on the Star Wars Kamba Sutra. Jabba doing the Bruce Lee, you know? The Fist of Fury. Yeah, the Fist of Fury. <laughs> that was... You know, I couldn't, you can't do a weird book of sex positions and not have a giant green slug in it yeah. as often as possible. Yep. Uh, you know, for the same reason, I, I had to find a way to get the Ewoks in there. I, I, I had to find a way to get Han and Carbonite. Uh, I don't know if you've done that one yet. We did that one already, yeah. Um, you know, there's a, you know. The Perfect Man, that's a great one, you know. It's a... Uh... I, I would have appreciated it better if you put a little carbonite penis sticking up in the air. That would have been a uh, pretty funny. That's I didn't I didn't think of that, but um, but there, there's always Han Solo. Yep. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've done that one. No, yeah. but I, I get I, I get the and, gist already. Yeah. And uh, we, there's always there's definitely Han shot first. We we've done the Master Vader. We've done that. There one, you go. Was that was I think one of the one after. Uh, that that's um that was a model kit that was like that was a I'm trying to remember who made that was a, that was a Japanese model kit. Um, 
Or but after team? I sent the picture of the adats to my wife, the Master Vader was was the was the second one. <laughs> it was it was just such an easy joke to make. No, that's, a, that's a that's a layup right there. Yeah, we've done Attack of the Clones, which was a uh, yeah, you know pretty detailed. Some of them took um, more thought than others. Yeah, um, that was. Uh, I had, I had to describe this... all, Doc, all the this... poor. Uh... The what? No, go ahead. What are you going to say? I said I had to describe all, all the poor names of all of the clones and when what they were actually doing to each other. Oh, okay. you know what? Going back to a question from earlier, I think one of the one of the biggest spend I did was to get all of the figures with all of the pieces of the bar. That um, was yes, that's expensive. That one. So I think I think I did. It was probably like 10, 15 bucks per figure, and it was three or four sections. Yep. So, Doc, hit us with the haiku. Oh, we want a haiku. Okay. Oh dear God. Any, any particular one that that, that that you want to throw out there, Eric? I am gonna leave this to you. All right. Let's see. Um. Hmm. Okay, here's a go. Here's a good one. There is another. Wish Yoda had said something before I kissed my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I also do like the uh, the Tauntaun one. That uh, lonely night on Hoth, they smell worse on the inside. That that was also a good one too. I believe uh, we. Were, I was real careful in putting these together. I think. They all do adhere to proper haiku rules. Yes, uh, I, I have been, as we do them one by one, paying attention, and you are correct. It was that was. I I I spent two or three weeks working on the haiku. Each or, to... or overall the all of them. What? Two or three weeks per haiku or no over all of them. Okay. I, I haiku. The goal was to get that book out before Force Awakens hit theaters, uh-huh. and we beat it by like a week and a half. And I was, we we've been. I live right near Disney World, and so for every Star Wars film except for, uh, except for Rise, the last one, uh, we've been going to the special fan screenings uh, that are like an hour before the premiere at the theater at Disney World. We just couldn't get in for Rise. Uh, but we were coming out of The Force Awakens, and I got a, an alert on my phone, uh, and it was a Maxim article called uh, All I Want for Christmas is the Star Wars Kama Sutra. Oh, that's nice. awesome. So, and we've sold – that book has sold like 10,000 copies. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Good for yeah. you. And, uh, and Disney hasn't come after me yet. Because, honestly, if you're going to come after me for a book like this, you're a dick. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, you could you could sue me for it, and I and I won't have the money. Um, and if you sue me for it, I'll take it down. But there's ten thousand copies out there, so have fun with it. Exactly. You know, <laughs> I love it. You know, awesome. So, so awesome. but yeah, it's a it's a. I'm. I mean, that book's what that book's. Five six years old now, yep. and you guys are still loving it. So that that blows my mind. Well, like yeah, I said, like like Pop said, my, my wife had picked picked it up for me for Christmas, and I had no idea it even existed. And I immediately we've been doing the show for almost exactly a year now, so um, every week. And so from Christmas on, we've been doing a section of it because it just it's it's it, it's humor, and it's you know, and it's the way it was written to fit perfectly into the. The shit house that is the show on a regular basis. So <laughs> it, it's, it's to me, it's like it's it's a book for real Star Wars fans who aren't so far up their own asses that everything is sacred. You know, I get it. Yeah, uh, I, I take it. So I we I there's a Facebook group I'm on locally. It's a Orlando Star Wars collectors group, and they have these awesome swap meets um, every so often. And I bring all the stuff that I want to get rid of so I can buy more stuff. Yeah. And and I bring some copies of the book. And everyone always wants this book. People, I've had little old ladies come up to me at these shows and buy this book. Uh, it's because it, it's fun. It's fun. It's stupid as hell, but it's supposed to be. You know, it's not. It's not high art. It's dick and fart jokes. 
but yep. it's Star Wars dick and fart jokes. It fits right <laughs> into our mantra, brother, right <laughs> then and there. Yeah. You're, yeah. Now, you're now now you're over and your book's over. And speaking about who's what's over, we do a segment on the show called Who is More Over? Now, I explained to you before what it means, but let me explain it to all the uh, idiot fans out there that um, over is a wrestling term. And we use it in the business, and it means popular. So when you're the good guy wrestler, you're known as a baby face. When you're over as a baby face with the fans, people will spend a lot of money to come see you beat up the bad guy. Now, when you're a bad guy in wrestling, you're known as a heel. And when you're over as a heel, people will pay a lot of money to come see you get your butt kicked by the hero. So we compare two aspects of Star Wars. Person, place, thing, doesn't matter. Every week. And we see who's more over with you guys. More importantly, we see who's more over with us. So, Doc, enlighten them. Who are our participants this week? So this week was my pick again. Um, I've been you wanting to get, get over. Sh- Hold on. Sorry. You're I'm not getting get over. Shit in. I'm getting my shit, shit in. in. Super kick, super kick, dive, dive, handshake, dive. Fuck um, <laughs> get over on the crowd. Uh, so I, for a while, I've been wanting to get gener- General Grievous into the mix. And we've had some combinations in the past behind the scenes talking about Grievous and who, who we match him up with. Um, and none of it really made any sense, but then I came to the revelation that maybe we should put Grievous. So good old coronavirus patient zero general Grievous <laughs> versus uh, his uh, equally interesting and equally bad um, buddy in the prequel trilogy, Django Fett. So basically... We're going to go around the horn, Eric, and talk about, for us, who we think is is more over, who we think is more popular to us, and why. Uh, but first, we'll go to the comments that we have on our Facebook page. Frank LaFerra. Django died quick and without much fanfare. Kind of lame, considering his legacy with Boba and the clones. Grievous was a stone-cold bastard and way more cunning throughout the Clone Wars. Maybe I would feel different if we had more time with Django, but nah, he was a scrub. Um, let's see what else I got on the comments here. Unfortunately, Facebook on the most recent update took off the poll option. I know Papa Don was really upset about that because the more polls, the better for Papa Don. Um, but, uh, we don't have a percentage wise of who beat who, um, Frankie Luna, yeah. Django all day. He does not get the shine he deserves. Uh, let's see. Those are the two comments we got today on the. On the Facebook, Sabrina, did you put that? Did you put it up on the Instagram uh, story? I can't remember. Spiro, you're muted. Spiro, you're muted. No, 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 I'm not. It's clever editing, guys. Come on. <laughs> nah, I uh, I put it on Instagram. I I directed everybody that from now on they need to go to the website if they want to partake. But next time I will do that. I will put it up on, on the story. No, no, no. From now on, all you people listening to the show, that's right, all three of you guys, we want you to go to the website. It's newforceorder.com. Newforceorder.com. We'll be doing the polls. You can leave your comments on the website. You go back to the merchandise section, go buy your NFO uh, coffee mugs, T-shirts, mankinis, flamethrowers, whatever. Just go to the website, newforceorder.com. Do it. So, do we have anything from Instagram or Twitter? No? Okay. Well, we got a few emails from our fans. All three of them. And our first one is from Jay Baca. Who's more over? Greetings from the great state of Texas. Well, yeehaw! yippee ki mm. motherfucker. Day one listener, first time emailer. Nice. This, is, this is not even a contest. General Grievous is over all day and night long. Django isn't even the most over Fett. This is the best Star Wars podcast in the galaxy. May the Force be with you always. Well, thank you there, Jay. Next email is from a first-time emailer by the name of Tim Gilby. Never heard of him. Nope. (laughs) Hey, NFO guys. This week I'm picking General Grievous to go over. I really enjoyed his battle with Obi-Wan. When the lightsabers are all lit up, I was like, damn, 
Damn, that's sick. How the hell is Obi-Wan going to combat that? Even though Jango is Boba's father, parentheses, clone father, in my opinion, his bottle his battles just don't cut the mustard. Yala, NFO for life. Uh. Then we have another email from Scott Rampino. Oh. I, I pop, I think your uh you know your threat last week uh like uh, rang true. Oh good. After thinking about it, I'm going with General Grievous. Django is cool, but I dig Grievous more. Okay. And lastly, and not least. Let me guess. Yeah, Hold on. Wait. Hold on. There could be so many people. Let me think. Uh... <laughs> Wait a minute. How how long is it? Now you sound like uh, Doc's <laughs> wife. It's Hans. Okay? So the answer is very long. <laughs> okay, here we go. Grievous over strong. His backstory was great in Legends books. Labyrinth of Evil was a good read. Is it canon? Doubt it. It is hard to go against Boba's papa, Django. However, they both got killed in the same movie they debuted in. Grievous got way more airtime through Clone Wars. They could flesh out some of his character, including killing Padawan Nadar Veb. No, Pop, I did not look this up. His, la- his lair that had racks of spare parts was cool as well as his mechanic for his pit stops and oil changes. That was on the Clone Wars uh, TV show. I remember that. Just a quick call. Uh, oh, just a quick call back for you guys. Pop it on mention, mentioned a little something something on why Bob, Bob Iger got cut immediately. I did, I did a search for Bob Iger child trafficking. Uh-oh. We're going down the conspiracy path now. Oops. He's in cahoots with Weinstein and ex-CEO Mike Eisner. Check out the link I attached. Not a good look for the mouse. Later, guys. Oh, last week I forgot joke of the week. All right. (laughs) So Hans is giving us more jokes. Oh, boy. What's the one thing you do not ask in Italian? How did your day go? Here's a second one for Spiro. (laughs) That was great. Why was it great? A dago. What's a dago? <laughs> What's a dago? I get it now. A What's dago. a dago? <laughs> it's, what does it's, that mean? A, it's a it's a derogatory term for an Italian. You, uh, you, you dago wop. Oh, I, I get was, the wop. I never heard I the dago. I was about to give you. I was about to give you uh, an example for uh, another one, but you know, yeah, yeah. Doc, right. save. Okay, here's one for Spiro. What's the difference between a camera? And a pair of shoes. One is for photos. The other is for five toes. From the land of shitty sidewalks, your boy Hans. <laughs> one is for photos. Toes, so bad, the other bad. one's for five toes. I don't get it. Is that like a photographer humor or something? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, photos, five toes. All right. Anyhow. You got a joke, uh, Eric, you want to share with us to try to save I, the show? I was just trying to think about who's more over. All right. Uh, well, do, you, do, you want, do you want to go first or you want to go last? I'll go first. Okay, go ahead. Because uh, I got some stuff that's fresh in my head off of this. I think, I think Grievous is, is, a, is a cooler toy, first of all. And, and Django is pretty much just a Boba Fett repaint. So yeah. right off the bat, right off the bat, Django gets a point in that direction. <laughs> but if you're talking impact on Star Wars, um, what I remember about reading from about Grievous, uh, who for me was coolest in the Jenny Tartakovsky Clone Wars before, great show. before the before the CGI and a great version. Show. Yep. Yeah. But um, his his story ended real sad in the books. He basically just kept getting rebuilt and put with different programming, and he just got used for parts for for several generations, if if I'm remembering that right. And then you got Django, who was kind of a useless character, got his head lopped off without any real trouble. But without Django, you don't have uh, you don't have the fives. You don't have you don't have um, 
any of the clones that we're used to from, from Clone Wars or from Rebels. You don't have Boba Fett, who honestly doesn't do all that much either, but, but he's like the Star Wars bass player. Everyone loves him. Um, you know, so he, I think from a lasting legacy, Django is more important. Uh, but uh, if I'm going to have one of their action figures on my wall, it's going to be it's going to be Grievous. Okay, so so bes besides action figure and impact, you your personal favorite, if you had to pick one, I thought Grievous. I like Grievous more as an interesting character, um, but I can't I can't discount the legacy left behind from Django. Okay. Fair. You know, you don't have Rex, you don't have Cody, you don't have Boba Fett, you don't have any of them without Django and a bunch of people on Camino. Um, you know, but I think if I'm gonna go like who's whose posters going on my wall? Grievous. Every freaking second of the day. He's mm -hmm. a, he's a robot with a bunch of arms and a lightsaber in each one. That's freaking cool. All right, you Doc. Know, the only problem with he sounds like he's got COPD. Yeah. <laughs> so, as much as a Boba Fett mark I am, um, you know, because I'm tattooed with the Mandalorian crest, um, and I love all things Boba. Django is. I was very excited to see that they were going down a pathway to kind of flesh out a Boba Fettish type. Boba Fettish. Oh, that's one of the the Kama Sutras as well. Um, we did that last week. Uh, to to flesh out a Boba Fett type character. Um, I think you guys are correct where he, he fell short in kind of what we wanted to see for him. Um, I did like the battle between him and Obi-Wan um, on Kamino. I thought it was somewhat short lived, but it was, it was a fun battle. We get to see a lot of his tricks that he has up his sleeve kind of throughout that whole movie. Um, he definitely goes out like a bitch, but I mean, who's not going to go out like a bitch to Mace Windu? I don't know. There's not many people who, I guess, the Emperor. Um, but uh, his death was one of the more brutal, and vicious, and memorable deaths of any character in a Star Wars universe. Um, and I don't think we would have gotten so much. Well, we did have a, de a, de a decapitation in the uh, in the Rise of Skywalker. So, but it was a very um, cartoony decapitation in the uh, in that creature that gave him the information. We got one um, in. Uh... In uh, in uh, uh, Revenge of the Sith, Dooku, Dooku was decapitated as well. You are correct. So there's there was one in each movie. Um, and I think you know that portion of the story kind of pushes Boba to to, to do whatever he did in his life. Um, aesthetically, he looked a lot better than Boba because he wasn't dinged up and he was more shiny, um, which was cool. Uh, but Grievous was a different. He was a different beast. He's nothing like that we saw in Star Wars before. Um, especially for the fact that he was, he was everything we hope Boba Fett to be. You know, when we saw the, uh, the, the scalps on Boba Fett's armor, we immediately thought they were Padawan scalps and he was chasing, you know, Jedis and killing them. Are they Wookiee pelts? Are they Padawan scalps? No one knows, but we know for a goddamn fact that Grievous was taking Jedi out left and right. And he was collecting them sabers like the guy who was selling you fake Rolexes in the train station when he pulls open his, uh, his exactly. trench coat. So um, Grievous just being like this cross between like the prototype of Darth Vader and like kind of like badass with multiple sabers like Maul was just super over with me. So for me, it's going to be Grievous every day, twice on Sunday. Sparrow? Man, I'm going to go with Grievous as well, man. It's, it's very hard to argue with what these guys said. Um, you know, and plus, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker – for the character who has sort of a tragic story, I wouldn't say Boba had one. I'm not not Boba, um, Jango Fett. But if you know Grievous's story, it's a little tragic, you know. But um, I'm I'm just gonna go for a Grievous man. All right, well I'm gonna go with Jango. Uh, the reason I picked Jango is because um, <clears throat> I'm gonna agree with our guest. He had such an impact. With the clones, and I'm a big fan of the clones army more than the stormtroopers. And if there was no Django, there'd be no clones, there'd be no Cody, there'd be no Rex, uh, there'd be no Bad Black, uh, Bad Batch 99. So uh, none of that would exist. And obviously, me being a huge Boba Fett uh, fanboy, just like Doc, there'd be no Boba Fett. So 
all in all, Grievous was cool. I like the fact he collected lightsabers. I like the fact he um, twirled them around. I like the fact he was a chicken shit heel. He always ran away because it got you even madder because he was so big and bad. And instead of staying in the fight, he, he you know he ran away. But the one thing that, that just annoyed the hell out of me with Grievous is that stupid ass cough. They never explained how he got it. And it turned into that that the original cartoon. It was because Mace Windu uh, crushed his chest. I remember, but that's not canon anymore. So, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, but again, I'll, I'll pick Django. I like Django better, and I like the fact that he had the two handguns. He looked like a six shooter, like an old outlaw. You know what I mean? I thought that was cool. That was awesome. So, so there you go, folks. That's that is your who's more over segment. Do us a favor. Do yourselves a favor, not just for us. You guys want us to talk about a certain subject on who's more over. You guys just wanted us to talk about anything relating to Star Wars. Or you guys want to talk to us regarding a galaxy far far away, email us. An email address is newforceorder at yahoo.com. That's newforceorder at yahoo.com. It's very simple. The email is newforceorder at yahoo.com. The website is newforceorder.com. So you guys won't get it mixed up, hopefully. But who knows? Nothing surprised me anymore with you fans. Hey, Papa Don, listen, man, you know what? To make it even simpler, you can even send us your emails directly via the website. Oh, even so, better. Yeah, so, you know, if you're having trouble, if you're not tech savvy just go to www. <laughs> if you can't enter a fucking email address into a fucking uh... <laughs> exactly hit the contact fucking button and it's all fucking you know spelled out for you nicely you know but hey uh, listen man and, and 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 i don't mean to cut you off but i know that i'm sounding well to some people we may be sounding a little bit condescending and i believe uh, somebody sort of bitched about that. Uh, I think. Oh, well, you yeah, know damn did. well they did. Yeah. Does Does anybody have that that uh, e- email there available? Doc, you got it. Uh, I got it here. So then you read it. All right. All right. You're gonna like this one, Eric. All right, ready f- for this one? This is awesome, man. All right. This one is from our from our. Homeboy, Homeboy 88, okay? The message is as follows. I'm a big fan of the Hack of the Hack and Hammond podcast network. Should be Hacker awesome. Hammond. Should... Yeah, I know. I found you guys through that, and I love the show. Awesome, man. Thank you. But fuck you, Papa Don and Spiro, for talking shit about me, a loyal fan. Doc, you didn't say anything, so you're good. As far as Papa Don goes, I'll beat that little midget in a cage or a ring. Know your role, and don't be talking shit to your fans, bro. Peace. I'm out, homeboy. All right. Hey, man. I can. I, I fucking dig it, man. I fucking love. He brought some fire. But you know what sucks, man? If you're a faithful listener and you've been listening to us since day one, you should know this isn't the show for people who are fucking overly sensitive and who can't take a joke or, or who can't take a little bit of an insult. If you know, if you're a bit of a snowflake, the show isn't for you. But I can appreciate that email and I can uh, uh, appreciate that fire. You know, guys. Should we call him live on air? <laughs> I think we should call him live on air. Eric, would you like to be part of this conversation or hear t- partake I, in this or hear this conversation? I think you're giving him what he wants. Uh, yeah, we are. I, I, I don't think he's that offended. I think if he was that offended, he'd stop listening. He'd never hear from him again. He just wants to. He just wants you to say his name. No, we we no. We, we, we we realize that off the bat, but okay. We are, I just feel like by giving this dude a call and seeing what, what 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 will entail. So, hold on one second. Let's try to call him on on uh, on this thing over here called uh, what's the number? What is it? We actually uh, 
encourage this, though. You <laughs> yeah, know, we, 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 we do. That, we yeah. really do. We ask for it. Dialing him in? Yeah, hold on. I can't add anybody to the call. There we go. I know it's not working. Hello? Yes, is this Homeboy 88? Yeah, this is him. How you doing there, Homeboy? It's your boy Papa Don calling you live on the NFO. How is everything? We're just having a live show right now, live to tape. We wanted to call you regarding you on your email. <laughs> Hold on one second. I got to add a couple people on this call. And we're going to make this a nice little uh, a nice little call for, the, for everybody involved. Hold on. Hello. Is this oh, homeboy? Is this homeboy eighty eight? What's up, brother? It's Doc. I'm not on, guys. Hold we'll on, get, we'll get you, Spirit. We'll get you. Hey, you listen. I know I'm cool. I'm cool every day of the week. Yeah, well, we'll get we're getting Spear on right now. Hold on. <laughs> no, that's Spiro. So, so what's the beef, brother? Talk to us. Well, let's 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 elaborate a little bit here. Last last time I checked, this is our show. So we can do whatever we want. <laughs> so tough shit there, sunshine. So that's the first fact. Second fact is we appreciate you listening to us. We appreciate the email even more because it took someone with actually cojones to write in and complain and tell me to go F myself and Spiro to go F himself. So Two things. Kudos to you for having a pair of nuts. Usually they bounce off your chin, but for the first time they were actually in your pants, so congratulations. And secondly, it only proves that um, you, my friend, Homeboy88, probably aren't as smart as you think you are because the reason we're doing what we do is because this isn't your typical paint-by-number podcast. We don't have to kiss the, 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 the fans' ass what we got to do is just entertain them. And we're three real dudes from New York. And you sound like you're from the West Coast, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right? No. Nope. Where are you from, L.A.? Uh -huh. Nice. I'll be in L.A. March 28th. AWA, AWS Wrestling. Come check me out. But uh, uh, look it up. AWS. I, somewhere in L.A. I don't know. It's just full of Mexicans. How can I tell you? Anyhow. Uh, what? What's up? Okay. Good. Thank you. I'm glad that you're Mexican. I'm not saying it in a negative way. I'm just saying it's full of Mexicans. So some part in LA. All right. Don't um, don't get offended. Are you a snowflake Mexican? No, man. All right, cool. You sound like a cool dude. Anyhow. Uh so do you have a problem with us? Did you? I appreciate the fire. I appreciate you. I appreciate you listening to us. So, and we actually encourage this. But and if you honestly guys felt a little bit offended by this, I'm gonna feel a little offended that we have a listener. That easily offended, and I hope that that's not you, brother. I guess not easily offended. I would just, you know, I've been with you guys since day one, and you know, I just don't buy your merch, you know. 
doesn't mean that we're not true fans. You know? Okay. Well, to be honest with you, that's your opinion, even though it's wrong. I mean, you go watch a baseball team, you go watch a football team, you go watch a hockey team, basketball team. Hell, even if you like Kanye West, you go buy some Yeezys to show some support. We were just telling the fans, hey, you guys all wanted merch. We, we had a limited supply that we sold out at Comic-Con. Then we backed up the order, we increased it, and we put it through the website. And everyone all of a sudden got uh, deep pockets and alligator arms. So there you go. So we had to give them a little bit of a verbal beating so they know their roles and they can shut their mouths because we catered to their needs and they didn't follow through. So that's it. No, we were just joking around about that. Look, we were thinking that maybe we should just throw everything on Patreon and if you guys really are fans, then you guys have to pay for it. Because we're doing this for the love of the of, of, of the genre and for the fans. Because let's face it, we're not making any money money on this podcast. And to be honest with you, I'm surprised we haven't been blackballed from this show, from, from the way we talk and the way we act. Because we're not your typical podcast. We're real. You guys are so good. I like it. I like it like Good. I appreciate it. Listen, do yourself a favor. Go to newforceorder.com. Buy some merch. Buy yourself a, a mug or a, or, or a T-shirt. There might even be an NFO sombrero if you want one. You know, whatever the case <laughs> might be. You know what I'm saying? Come down to Alternate Wrestling Syndicate, oh, AWS. On, come down to AWS on the 28th. What size shirt are you? I might even bring a shirt. If you don't get it online, I'll sell it to you at the shirt at the show. But regardless, uh, keep listening to the to the show, man. We appreciate it. Don't take anything right. we say. You know, at heart, it's all entertainment. We love the fans. We do get annoyed with them. We're not going to lie. Yeah. Because they ask us to do all this merch for them, and then they don't follow through. So we have to put out our own money and then wait for it to come back so we can make some profit. So we can at least pay for the website fees and the podcasting fees and put back into the show. It's not like we're making any money here. But regardless, doesn't matter. Anyhow, you have yourself a nice day. Go back to your house. Enjoy it, and uh, you know, go get your fucking shine box. What? I say, go get your shine box, there, Junior. For life. For life. Life. Uh... Yeah, that was great, man. Yo, so so apparently the whole spiel that I gave him, I, I was muted, huh? Uh, yeah, you can hear it through the phone. Oh, okay, okay. All right, good. All right. Hopefully, it doesn't sound like shit when we fucking put it on the podcast. Yeah, 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 you know, man, the fucking problem is when we do this shit. You know, it, you know, you, you get that feedback, that fucking echo. You know, listen, man, if you people would buy merch like you wanted us to fucking sell, we might be able to fucking afford a nice studio. Have a dedicated line to where people can call in, and every time that we call somebody to shit on them and motherfuck them, it it wouldn't sound that way. So there's that, you know. <laughs> You're right, there, Eric. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> Some of that was a little hard to hear, but no, I'm ah, I'm gotcha. following along. <laughs> gotcha. It's hard to hear for that guy. Trust me. Well, listen, we put that we put Homeboy eighty eight in his place. He'll go back on the freeway, go sell a couple of oranges, make some money. But until then, well, let's entice him with some Tatooine. I think it's about that time for Tatooine. Tatooine. That's this is our toy segment there, uh, Eric. So you're gonna yeah, appreciate. So you can awesome. jump in on this one anytime you want to. So basically, hold on, let me pull out the uh, the old iPhone. So put this on the web the website. Tatooine this week. So. I struggled with what I was going to do for Tatooine this week, but uh, I was digging through my stuff, and I found some old stuff to do. Not some new stuff, some old stuff. Some mar m marginally old. And we're going to have a little theme going on this week. You looking in the mirror? Yes. So, <clears throat> first up, from Star Wars The Black Line, we have our good friend, Master Yoda. Mm. There he goes. 
right Green there with, so, the NBA, yeah. with the snake and everything so this was released in the black series a couple of years ago probably five years ago and then they re-released them on the archive cards this is from the archive actually no i, th- I think this is from the original one actually i'm lying this is not the archive one <laughs> so the face isn't the, the face print technology one that we've come to see recently out of out of the new figures um they made him very reminiscent of his old school Kenner look where they gave him <laughs> the, the cane, which Yoda has. They gave him the little necklace, his pimp necklace that he has around his neck that's hanging there. And they gave him his snake. Now, if you're an old school Kenner collector, the snake came in how many colors, Eric? I, I just remember orange. There was an orange snake and then there was a green snake. Um, so... Which one's more rare? I'm not 100% sure, but there was a whole... I mean, the variants on Yoda are through the roof. There's one with Pac-Man eyes, with full eyes, with big painted eyes. The skin color is a little bit different, depending on the factory that it came out. You could drive some bana- bananas for it. Yes. Who had more variants? Uh, Yoda, Han Solo, or Luke? From the original line. As in specific of one figure or multiple different figures in a different outfit? No, one figure. So you know how some Han Solo's yeah. had different hair colors. The big Same head. Yeah. The it's it's honestly hard to say. I'd probably say it's probably Yoda. It's my guess. But there's so many variations between skin color and hair and hair color, and it's just it's bananas. So, and you'll drive yourself crazy going through everything. Some people do. Then I they're nuts. Um, so Yoda comes with his little belt, his utility belt, hanging off of that. He, the original. The Kenner one, the re the re released Kenner one when Hasbro took over, had the little light that he was you know would torture R two D two with as well, um, and it was a very similar figure to the the original one except the fact that um, it didn't have the soft goods robe that he had on him there, which is uh, kind of the the staple for Yoda. They gave him a lightsaber, which is kind of inaccurate for this Yoda because this is this is the Empire Strikes Back Yoda, Hermit and not, Yoda. yes, Hermit Yoda, and not the I'm going to do my flippity flip lightsaber stuff. But I guess they had to include it just because, you know, as Yoda and you have to give him a lightsaber, which is fine. Um, retail for nineteen ninety nine when it was out. You can pick them up on eBay now. Speaking of Yoda, oh, this is an old school 12 inch Power of the Force one, you know, in the 12 inch scale line. Yeah, exactly. Eric was like, oh, that shit's old and brutal looking, too. It's actually the face sculpt. Is not so bad for a figure that's probably almost 20 years old? Actually, more than 20 years old now. I like um, the coloring on that one better than the Black Series. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, It definitely looks a lot more organic as a Yoda. It's probably also because it's a little bit bigger as well. This is from 1997, so 23 years old. That's pretty ancient. Um, Yoda didn't come with much back then. You know, His articulation is very minimal. He's got the arms. He's got kind of a like one-piece leg thing going over there. If you peel him off, he's got a very old school Yoda look to him, which all the old school Kenner Yodas had. Um, this one came with a cane, which I think is long gone somewhere in the recess of the uh, of the backyard somewhere, um, or in a box that I have somewhere. Um, again, he has the cloth the the cloth cape. He's got the belt around the waist. Very Maybe the cane the- is in the bush next to the Ewok. Cane exactly, Racer. they're in in a similar place. But the head sculpt really still holds up pretty well for the twelve inch line. Um, that was released more kind of, you know, if I, 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 despise, <laughs> I, I despise it when people call action figures dolls, but for sure, the 12 inch Star Wars line from the power of the force looked very dollish. If you looked at them, um, with their cloth outfits and their, you know, squeezable plastic heads, they, they were the most dollish out of all the Star Wars figures that were out there. Um, I still have nearly all of them. I think I'm missing only one, um, Someone beat me to Chewbacca as I was walking to the aisle. I was very upset when I was in, when I was in college. Um, and they're worth probably less than what I paid for them initially. So, which is always a good thing in the collecting world that you can't sell them for a song, unfortunately. Um, the only odd thing about this Yoda is that they painted his toenails kind of this strange shade of orange, which I think, you know, he went to the, the Wuhan nail salon prior to. <laughs> Getting released, and Yo, he got his toes painted up real nice. So, you know, Yo, they could have used from, a more flesh color instead of the uh, orange that it is. From my angle, one one foot looks like it's red. The other one looks looks like a yellow, maybe. Yeah, they're both. Uh, right? they're, both they're both orange. Uh, okay, it's, I see. It's, I, it's, it's the light that I have oh, shitty okay. in my office. Um, so that's the 97 version. Now I got something special as well. 
So this is an unreleased toy. Ooh, ooh, hello there. Um, Jiro Kenobi. We didn't even do that for our General Grievous thing. Um, so this is an unreleased. This is a, a cast that uh, a Instagram slash eBay seller sold to me that he does them. His name is uh, Star Wars Geek. He does a bunch of them. Um, and this is the Yoda cast. He basically took a Yoda figure. It's probably one of those like, like little... Um, hollow rubber ones that you kind of can squeeze almost like a bath toy kind of looking and then he just casted it in uh in resin and then made it clear and is selling this as the spirit of yoda which was uh an interesting it has no articulation at all it's basically like a little statue that sits there but the um the black series hasn't made a yoda like this they have a yoda like this in the spirit of yoda which was exclusive to walmart but it really wasn't kind of in scale and or looking kind of the way he did at the end of Return of the Jedi. But this one definitely looks a lot more like that from the end of Return of the Jedi. Translucent plastic. If you have a base that sits underneath him that's that lights up, you could actually light him up through the bottom and, and make it actually look pretty cool. It's super <laughs> fragile. The toes break off all the time. The ears break off. All. It's my second one because the first one he sent me had broken ears. He sent me a new one. Um, How much did I run you? I think that was like maybe 25 with shipping or something like that. Pretty worth it. How big is it? It's uh, It fits in the black scale line as well. So it's probably like maybe an inch and a half somewhere around there. So can he make like a whole bunch of Jedis all like uh, ghost up? Oh, so man, it's almost like we predicted this one. So another eBay seller sold me this oh, one. Oh, don't. Which, which I picked up on eBay a couple of years ago. Hello there. So exactly. So this is the similar idea as, as the Yoda one, but this is the Obi-Wan Kenobi one. So... It looks like they casted it probably from a Black Series figure, um, and they put him, you know, in the in the casting material, brought him out, and this is again one solid piece of plastic that doesn't have any articulation, but it is of our buddy Sir Alec Guinness, um, again in Spirit Force Ghost form. Um, this is by a different uh, customizer called uh, Jade Jaws Customs. He was at Comic Con actually when we were there with some of his newer stuff. Um, this one, I think, sent me back maybe 25 30 bucks, kind of similar. I wish I had waited because he also came out with his own version of Yoda, and he also came out with Anakin. Uh, young, has, young or old? He has, as a true customizer would, both young and old Anakin. Um, so you could choose. He has a set. You can get the three-piece the, the three piece set, and you could choose your Anakin, which is – we did that battle, who was moreover, a couple weeks ago, which Force Ghost Anakin was better, the new or the old one. And then he also just recently put into his store, um, straight off the heels of the Rise of Skywalker, at the very end of the movie, he has Force Ghost Luke and Force Ghost Leia as one well, piece together. Give me, give me a contact. I want, I want to buy them. I will send you the. And they're very statue-like, so honestly, they'll fit right into your collection, Papa Don, um, as opposed to mine. But I think they're cool, kind of sitting on the next to Black Series on the shelf. Uh, I'll send you the thing. But that's Jade Jaws Custom. Jade Jaws, as in the old moniker from the 70s for The Incredible Hulk. Um, and the other one for Yoda was Star Wars Geek. Both of them are on Instagram um, and have eBay stores as well. Um, they're pretty cool. I enjoy them. They're sitting in my Black Series self. Uh, I need to get a light for them to light them up. But um, I, need to, I also need to finish the rest of the collection with the rest of them there as well. So I will send you that link. We can post it on the, on the page, on the Facebook page, and on the, on the web page as well. But that's Tatooine this week, boys. What's your strangest Star Wars toy that you got? Oh my God, my strangest Star Wars. Oh, I can answer this one. Uh, my show Star him Wars... the Jesus. Show him the Jesus. Piece. Oh, my Star Wars pocket pussy. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. Talk about a Star Wars pocket. The Sarlacc pit. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. No, so I have this, which is I thought it's not really a toy, but it's kind of <laughs> hilarious. I love it. It's basically <laughs> Jesus Christ, and you could dress him as various Star Wars characters. It's like a magnet that goes in your fridge. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, have you that's... seen the the Vader Buddha? Uh, yes, actually, I have which. Oh, I have one of the Buddhas. I don't know which one it is, but yeah, I saw that guy printing. He, he some guy at Comic Con prints them up and has yep. the he has Yoda Buddha, the Vader Buddha. He has a Boba yeah. Fett Buddha. He has a bunch of them. I have one of the Buddhas. I don't. I think it's actually. I think it's uh, Beetlejuice from uh, the Howard Stern show. I think that's the Buddha. <laughs> I've got. He's not canon like Revan. What are you talking yes, about? No. Oh boy, here we go. Have, have you seen the uh, Chinese bootleg Star Wars minions? I have not seen those, no. Hold on a second. I'm taking oh, oh, oh. Nice. this is an exclusive. 
Who's um, the Tatooine? Oh, just just for reference from before. How do I flip this around? There we go. There you go. Just just so you guys can see from before. Let's plug this in. That's the statue that got me my wife. Nice. That's awesome. That's a good statue. I like that statue. Awesome. Um, it's very Mandalorian as well. Oh, let's see. And this, if you're a Star Wars fan, you want to track down this. What is that? The hell this is, that? is the Chinese bootleg comic book that they used to tell the story of Star Wars in China before it was actually allowed into the country. And it is basically created by what people told them was in Star Wars. Oh, that's so ah. it includes NASA oh, I gotta see that. like Vader riding a Triceratops. That's that is awesome. Fantastic. Um, wow, I gotta see that. Let's is that, see. Is that on eBay? Yeah, I picked up for like 20 bucks. Here are those Elite Series figures we were talking about. The, yep. the, the die cast ones. Okay, those look dope. Oh yeah, as long as they don't have a human face, they're great. Yeah. Otherwise, they suck. Uh, yeah, these are cool just because they're cool. These are from a guy named Jason Freeney. Yeah, those are the, the split ones. Yep. Yeah, some more of those. I've been collecting him for a while. Um, let me see. Bear with me here. Take you to the weird shelf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> those are awesome. awesome. Bootleg, whole selection of bootleg Star Wars and Marvel Minions. Uh, and then some other just weird bootlegs <laughs> also. The, one of my favorites right now is the Xenomorph Pikachu. And the R2-D2 Batman. I like, <laughs> I like the R2-D2 Batman. That's dope. That's awesome. um, yeah, and then just random assorted weirdness. That I like to keep around. But let me go over here. There's one other thing that you guys probably haven't seen very often. And it is, um, if you remember, you know Kinder Eggs before they came over to America and got garbage? Yep. In in Germany, where they started out, they did a whole line of hippopotamus yes, Star Wars characters. That's wild. <laughs> that you just don't see in the U.S. very often. That's awesome. And there's Donald Trump in a TIE fighter. Uh <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> uh and these guys which i don't know if you've seen before i don't know make if the empire today. great again um yeah these guys will dance for you you've got some obscure stuff over there buddy oh yeah i i try to stay amused so but yeah Very i've cool. been i've been collecting for a long long time what would you say is your, your favorite piece? Well, I mean, sentimentally, the one that got me a, a wife isn't that bad. Okay. Um, realistically, uh, love this Nautilus. Uh, wow. <laughs> and love this Silver Surfer. Very cool. And uh, I've always loved this Death Trooper also. Was that, oh, that's the zombie storm the trooper? zombie one, yeah. Yeah, that's from Celebration. Yeah, yeah. Um. And just because there's so little product of it, that Bubo from Gentle Giant <laughs> Yo, that's is always awesome, going to be an awesome piece. That's from Clash of the Titans, right? Yep. Yep. Nice. So. We know our stuff so, over yeah. here. Don't worry. So. Awesome. And that's just that's a little look at some of my Star Wars stuff. Very cool, man. Very, very cool. Uh, we didn't really touch base on much of the new stuff that came out this week. Uh we did mention that Mandalorian 2 wrapped up and some speculation on the the Forgerer. But uh, some sad news. Lord Santanka passed away. Um, Max Von, uh, what's his name? Sidow. Sidow, yeah. Ming the Merciless. <coughs> yes, Ming the Merciless. Great actor. So kudos to him, man. Godspeed and thank you for everything you have given us sci-fi geeks in the years that you've been on this planet. Um, supposedly, there's some... Clone Wars comics coming out from uh, IDW. It's going to be called um, very similar to the, the the comics that came out last year from Vader's Castle and Return to Vader's Castle. It's going to be called the uh, Clone Wars Battle Tales, and it's supposed to be long lost war stories that took place during the Clone Wars. 
Um, you guys familiar with the IDW publishing? I am. Yeah, they do a lot of the in the past some GI Joe stuff, some Transformer stuff. Now, Absolutely. do they share the license yeah, with Marvel? I guess they have to because, uh, you know, um, Marvel is doing Star Wars stuff. W now. Oh, there you go. All right, then that would that would make sense. So, they, in fact, they're doing Marvel license. They're they're doing Marvel titles at IDW now too. Interesting. They're, very very basically, cool. Basically, all the more family friendly stories are being ported over to IDW. Got it. Okay. Well, that would make sense. If Disney owns them, like we said before, they want to keep that family friendly. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, your wife couldn't get into Resistance. I watched Resistance. I liked it only for one reason, one reason only. What? My seven, my six-year-old son and I, that was his first Star Wars experience. I mean, he knows yeah. about, he know, he knows about you know, the premise mm-hmm. of the stories. We have all the golden books where I read him to be, you know, the stories before he goes to bed. He knows Vader's Luke's dad. But he's never watched a movie. He's never watched Rebels or Clone Wars. He's still too young for that. So we, we gave this a shot, <coughs> and it fit like a glove. It was perfect for someone his age. So for that reason alone, I loved it because it, it helped us have, you know, son-dad time with Star Wars, which is all, what, what it's all about. And other than that, though, not my cup of tea, though. Very very childish, very slap-happy with the lead character. But wasn't well. it wasn't badly done. If, it, if they matured it a little bit, I kind of dug the animation, the Celtic animation. It wasn't bad. I liked it. That's just my opinion, but whatever. But uh, not much news this week. That's the weird thing. Um, Star Wars came out with a new comic, issue number two. Yep. Actually, Doctor- they're, they're up to three now. So uh, yesterday, I, I I pounded through one, two, and three. I pounded through Empire Ascendant. Did you pound through your wife, too? All day. Um, nice. Empire Ascendant, which is the the, the the prelude to all the new Star Wars books. And then I read Kylo Ren 1 um, and Star Wars 1, 2, and 3. Um, basically, as we know, picks up right, at, right, right after Empire with them um, dealing with the whole aftermath of losing the battle, uh, Han getting captured, and the lightsaber uh, chronicles over there. Um and the first two two two, two issues kind of deal with Luke, as we said before, being a whiny little bitch and being upset that he, you know he thinks the Force abandoned him and he lost and he's thinking about Vader being his dad and he sees his vision of him joining him and all this stuff back and forth and he's getting used to his new hand, um, and all that stuff and then um, Lando uh, he and Leia go to Bespin because Lando has some business, some some business to finish and Luke wants to get his lightsaber back. Um, and while on Bespin, the you know the big cliffhanger in, in issue three is Leia getting captured by the stormtroopers and then them freezing her in carbonite at the end of that issue. Um, which you know when I um, saw that you know the big reveal at, at at issue three, I immediately thought about the line that she tells Han after he uh, she she unfreezes him in Jabba's palace. You have carbonite sickness. Your vision will return soon. So I think they took that line and then made it, oh, well, let's give Leia some experience with carbonite sickness when she gets, and let, let's have her be frozen in carbonite. So, you know, they're doing a lot of this with the whole, let's take one line in Star Wars and transform it to something else and make a story out of it, which certain aspects of it are okay, I think. But when you kind of, you know, when you're digging with the fucking shovel and you're already at the end, it's like enough already. Why you didn't you didn't you didn't you didn't care for it? I thought it was cool. No, nah, I was just like, really? Like, do we need that? I don't think we need that. I think you can tell a story without kind of throwing that in there. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I, didn't you know, Luke have a golden lightsaber too? Uh, no? not that I saw in the in, the, okay. in these two uh, issues. These three. So, issues. question: They they still haven't revealed who caught the saber, correct? No, they have not. No. All right. All right. Anyhow, so, are, you, are you up on your Star Wars comics, there, uh, Eric? Not so much on the comics. I haven't, I haven't, I I've got several long boxes of books in storage, but I haven't bought a comic book in a few years. Yeah, same here, dude. I have fourteen of them, right, right, right in the next room. It's ridiculous. Do you do you uh, partake in the books at all? The novels? I saw some some on your shelf. No, my wife reads every single one that comes out. Nice. She so thought, that's she, th- that entire bookcase is is her is her Star Wars book collection. She'll be on the uh, podcast next week. <laughs> and this, <laughs> good luck. She goes to bed at eight thirty. She wakes up at five in the morning. Wow. 
So does she, does she did, did, then instead of you reading him, you get the Cliff Notes abridged version from her? Pretty much. Nice. Smart man. Yeah. Work smart, not hard. I love it. Right. It saves me a lot of time. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. So. But well, did you hear there was a rumor that Afro was getting her own TV show? I TV heard show. that. Interesting. I heard that. I heard it might I heard a couple of rumors. I heard Afro might be getting a TV show. I heard that Kenobi might be the next film in 2022. I heard that uh Luke is supposed to have an animated series that takes place between uh 6 and 7 about him finding the Jedi order and then and I guess leading up to when Kylo decides to turn to a baddie. Um What? I hope not. <laughs> well, what I heard is Mark Hamill was supposed to do the voice of Luke in the animation series. So I think he feels like he's done. You know what? They'll back up that Brinks truck and he'll dust his done off. Star and... Wars money, baby. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Look, did do I feel he got done dirty in this trilogy? I love the new trilogy. I love all Star Wars. I'm very, very pro Star Wars. Do I think that they could have done a better job with Luke? Yes. Um, did I think that his death in episode eight was done incorrectly? No, I think he went out like a boss and like a true Jedi. Everything he did was in defense. It wasn't to strike first. It wasn't out of aggression. <laughs> he didn't even pick up a saber, a true pacifist monk style Jedi. Now, the problem I had was this. Carrie died. So you're actually going to leave the ending you had in the movie, which left her alive. And killed off Luke for the next for the next episode instead of just cutting the the movie short while he's levitating or sitting on the rock looking at the suns and then going straight to credits and leaving leaving him alive and then bringing him back for nine giving him a little bit more depth giving him a little bit more burn and more shine and killing him off of nine if needed to be I think that everyone would have been happier but that's just me so. I think they, well, they that didn't have that much of a plan the the problem the problem with the new if there's a problem with the new trilogy, is that Abrams wrote a plan and then Kennedy didn't make anyone follow it. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Totally. Yeah, and that also falls in line with the reports where I, I don't believe he said fuck Star Wars, but his fucking treatment of The Last Jedi and the property pretty much is sort of a fuck Star Wars from Ryan Johnson. I mean, you know, like you said, I feel that, I mean, Abrams himself said, I wouldn't have done it like this. He had some sort of a vision, but he didn't want to come back. I don't know if it was by choice or if Kathy Kennedy said, hey, I want to let this fucking guy do it now. I don't know. But I feel that he sh should have stuck with fucking Star Wars from, from day one, done all th three films, and that's that. You know, you know, man, we can't change it now. But it sucks, you know? So, yeah, well, I mean, look, Abrams is good. Johnson's a good director. Knives Out's a solid movie. Looper was a solid movie. He is. Brick was a he solid is. movie. Uh, I, I think... He did some stuff on purpose to try to leave his stamp on Star Wars, and it just didn't go. It didn't go as planned, <laughs> right? Um, you know, but you know, thirty years from now, people might come back and look at it as as the most as the bravest, most memorable Star Wars film of the new trilogy. I, I hope that's not the case, but it's very possible. <laughs> um, but yeah, I. It seems like it seems like if you want the real honesty about the new trilogy and how Abrams felt about what Johnson did, look at the interviews with Simon Pegg. Yeah, because <laughs> Simon Pegg wasn't bound by NDAs, and and he was happy to talk about how pissed he was and how pissed he knew Abrams was. Well, you know what, dude, you very fair point, and. and this whole episode nine JJ three hour cut, I personally believe it exists only because Chris Terrio came out. He wouldn't shut the fuck up about the movie, trying to explain it for the first couple of weeks. Then uh, the female editor came out saying that they left a lot of footage on the, on the, on the, on the uh, chopping room floor. 
and the fact that the DVD or Blu-ray, 4K, whatever it's called, coming out at the end of March has no deleted scenes on it whatsoever. So I wouldn't be surprised that there was a better explanation on how Palpatine came back. And they explained it a lot better. I even, what's his name? Um, the actor who plays Palpatine McCammon? said, yes, uh, he came out and said there was a line in the movie that they filmed, but they cut it out where he, where, where Kylo looks around, sees all the shenanigans behind them and says, you're a clone. And then he goes, more than a clone, less than a man. If they would have left that line in there for 10 seconds, that would have added so much levity and layers to that scene to where it would have made it a little bit better, except we got one of the freaking people from the Shire try to explain it to us saying, oh, uh, Sith Darth Magic and cloning. You know, nothing against Monaghan, but, you know, you need to elaborate a little bit more. A guy's been gone for 30 years. He can't just come back because he's the Emperor, because. That's not a good enough reason, you know what I mean? That's like asking your little five-year-old kid, why did you paint <coughs> on the wall with the Sharpie? I don't know, because. It just doesn't fit. You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing. Like, is this is the three hour cut that you're talking about a an Abrams cut or is it the first draft? Well, I heard it was just an Abrams cut because what I understood, I mean, again, this could all be false. Yeah. When they showed the movie at the premiere, it wasn't the movie that he had finalized that he gave Disney. Disney shaved it down allegedly by a half hour to try to get more run times in the theater, thinking people would come back and see it. So instead of getting four or five, um, well, four plays a day, they would get five plays a day on screen so they could get more butts in seats to make more money off the ticket sales. But the problem is that this movie, I love episode nine. I thought it was great. The only thing I had a problem with was two things. One, there was no solid explanation why Palpatine didn't come back which I think is the whole backbone of the movie. And two, at the end, I thought the fight with Palpatine was a little too quick with Ray. But from what I understood, there was more filmed. And allegedly, there was Force Ghosts that were present but wasn't right. used. And if that's the case, and they had a Mace Windu or an Anakin or a Ewan McGregor and a Yoda and all this stuff as a Force Ghost where they showed up and they didn't use it, it makes you wonder what the hell they're smoking over there in Lucasfilm. Because that's what exactly what everybody wanted to see. And from what I understand, the, the, their reasoning is, well, if we would have showed the Force Ghost there, it would have took away from the Force Ghost on Tatooine with Leia and Luke. I but you know what? But, but, but listen, man, right? So it sounds to me like they were probably the same amount of mishaps or mistakes or whatever you want to call them as the last jedi but, but this film was done so much better and yet there was a lot of fan service but it was fan service done right okay um i don't know man i too believe that there is a jj cut or there's at least a longer film I, yeah I i'm not saying that the, the jj cut it's a different film i just think it's a longer right film. No, it's not like a right. Snyder's cut, a Snyder cut that's totally different than what we got from Justice League, you know? Yeah, but yo, talking about that, man, and yo, did did you hear that he's trying to get the reshoots in? Yeah, I heard. I yeah. hope it happens. Hell I yeah, mean, man. We, we have the Superman two cut. I forgot the the director's name. The um, the, 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 the Donner, Donner right? The Donner cut. So why not? Yeah. People want to see it. Give them what they want. They're going to spend their money. Um, but aside from that, I mean. It's over now. We just move forward. Hopefully this uh, High Republic stuff. I heard a rumor that the films that Dan and Dave, the the D and D, uh, uh, the Game of Thrones guys, were supposed to be part of this. And now yeah, that they, they left got, the project, they got shut down, didn't they? Yeah, well, that's because of the whole Netflix deal. I heard they stuff. were supposed to be doing Kotor films. Was it what they were doing? Well, it could be Kotor that that they just changed to High Republic from Old Republic. I have no idea. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. it's Disney. And I heard the alleged, the alleged Feige trilogy is an Ahsoka is a, an Ahsoka storyline, um, which unfortunately Brie, uh, a whole on a trilogy lot of though? websites with with allegedly Brie Larson campaigning for the role, and I hope that doesn't happen. I hope so too. Um, I mean, yeah, 
No, but look, nine nine is always going to be kind of a special film for whatever its flaws are, because nine to me was the most Star Wars film uh, since the original Star Wars film, in that Lucas always talked about uh, being inspired for Star Wars and and Indiana Jones and stuff by the old cliffhanger serials uh, that would play in the movie theaters in the in the twenties and thirties and forties. And I'm not saying this, the, nine didn't feel disjointed or anything to me, but it felt like <coughs> you were getting a series of, of episodes with cliffhangers that had constant movement. People, I heard people complaining that too much was happening in nine. And I didn't think it was, I didn't think that was the case. I think if you're lazy, too much is happening. If you're paying attention, then you're fine. I agree. Uh, but there was, there was this sort of frenetic energy that you would get in those old, um, like uh, in those in those old serial Zorro and, and and Buck Rogers and all that stuff, uh, that that I think he managed to capture that no one else has captured since uh, since Lucas first came out with the, the first movies and then I think Spielberg with the Indiana Jones films at least with the first one. Um, mm. But nine nine's a good film. Nine has problems. Oh yeah, they all have problems. <laughs> they all, all the they Star all, Wars films. There's, 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 there's no stuff, perfect Star Wars film. Yeah, there's stuff you could do differently in all of them. Um, but nine nine is nine's the best ending. Nine's the best ending I could have hoped for with eight existing. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, I personally don't think it's the best Star Wars ending of all time, but... Oh, God, no. No. no, no, no I really no. like the Luke cliffhanger ending at the end of Seven. You know, but but it's also it's also not, you know, an Ewok adventure. Yeah. Which most people have thankfully forgotten. Um, Caravan of Courage? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, I tried to go back and watch those recently, and, and the Christmas special is better than them. <laughs> at least at least the Christmas special had that kick ass Boba Fett cartoon in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. His first appearance well yeah. alleged first appearance. From what I heard, his real first appearance was in a in the parade. They had a guy dressed up as Boba Fett and no one knew who the hell he was, character wise, because he hasn't appeared yet. And he appeared in the parade marching with Vader and all this stuff. And then that was a few months before uh or some time before the Christmas special. So I don't know. Oh. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. Either which way. Listen, Eric, thank you for coming on the show. It was a pleasure Happy talking shop order. with you, brother. There's nothing more better than Star Wars. What's the one thing better than Star Wars, Doc? Uh, it'll help if you take yourself off a of mute. Now, now Doc is muted. More fucking Star Wars. Thank you. Let's do yes, it again sir. professionally. Let's be professional. What's better than Star Wars? More fucking Star Wars. Eggs. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving us your time and your ears. Thank you for joining us for another action-packed, fully stacked adventure. Uh, let them know where they can find you, Eric. Time for some plugs. Uh, you can you can find the Star Wars Kama Sutra on Amazon. Just uh, look for the if you want the one with the with the haiku, you want the original. If you want the one with more pictures based on the new trilogy, then you want the special edition. Uh, otherwise, you can find me if you need if you need help with your online dating profile. You can find me at profilehopper.com. Very cool. Do you have any social media links you want to share with anyone or no? Uh, I got an SM Herder Facebook page, but I don't pay nearly enough attention to it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> luckily enough, you messaged me back because uh, we we were trying to track you down for a little bit. Yeah, I I saw the notification eventually. Nice. And and then I I, I got right back to you. But yeah. Um, that's the main place is, is SN Herder or, or just, you can always find me through profile helper either way. Very cool. Very cool. All right, boys, smarten up the marks with your social media stuff. You can find me on Instagram at Dr. Dr. Underscore Destroyo, D E S T R R O Y O Facebook, Alex Arroyo, Twitter, Alex Arroyo M D. And I will be in the ER vigilantly fighting the coronavirus. And you can find me on Instagram, Spiro underscore A, Darth underscore Spiridon, 
and Z underscore Apollo underscore photography <laughs> on Twitter. I am Handsome Reaper on Facebook, Handsome Reaper Productions. You can find me at Greek God Papadon on Twitter and Instagram, Demetrius Papadon on Facebook. Uh, Pro Wrestling Tees backslash Greek God Papadon is the Pro Wrestling Tee store where you can get all your Greek God Papadon wrestling t shirts. You can go to my YouTube page, Greek God Papadon, to see all my matches and my promos. Uh, the 21st of March, I will be in Deer Park for SWA in the main event. And then on the 28th, I will be in California in LA for AWS. Maybe Homeboy88 will show up and I'll get to smack hand him a little bit and smack him around after he buys a shirt and tell him to take his shine box and go back to the back to the casa where he lives at. But anyway, that's a story for another time. You could find the three of us, more importantly. Or oh, also tomorrow you can find me on the Conspiracy Horseman podcast with the Conspiracy Horseman, myself, Big Sal Graziano, Stevie Richards, and Bin Hamin, four pro wrestlers who are talking shop about conspiracy theories, free thought, self-enlightenment, and always questioning the narrative that is on live on Twitch, twitch.tv backslash conspiracy horsemen. You can find the three of us, most importantly, at NFO underscore podcast on Twitter, official New Force Order on Facebook, New Force Order on Instagram, the website, if you haven't got it by now, it's newforceorder.com. You can buy merchandise. You can send us emails. You can listen to all the past shows. You can listen to the clips. You can see the the YouTube videos that we have because we also have a YouTube page, New Force Order. And you can send us emails at newforceorder.com. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thanks for your time. Thanks for your ear. Homeboy88, thanks for picking up the phone, you sorry sack of shit. But regardless of that, this has been an exciting edition of the new, 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 new Force Order. Before life. And that's just too sweet. Henceforth, execute Order NFO. <laughs> <laughs>